Kevin, you can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. There goes the music. Time to start. No friends. All right. Behind. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Welcome to Crabby D and I am here with Suds. Now, Harlan. Goodbye. Sam. See you later. And Simon. Hello. Oh, Aha. <laughs> <No. laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> the Simon sus vote him out. Yep. <laughs> Uh, we have we will have a Jamie joining at some point soon. He is currently disposing a family. Um, <laughs> My guns. Which, My guns. You know, you, what you usually say. And Infernal has been called away. He really wanted to be here for this session, but he's been called away, unfortunately. So maybe he'll join later. Maybe he won't. We'll see. He might get to see some of it. If not, I'll be running him through what happens in here, um, depending on what happens, ultimately, as this goes along. So... Usual uh, announcements. Thank you to Sonosa for all the artwork. Thank you to um, Tabletop Audio for the free sound and music and stuff. I highly recommend checking them out. We've got a lot of good soundtracks in there. Uh, as well as some 10 minute loops, which if you're part of the Patreon program, you will be able to break that down into two separate uh, things. One for ambience and one for the typical music, which is very nice because I've been using quite a lot of that um, while painting models or just in general. Um... So yes, uh, most of the combat maps or detailed maps are done on incarnate.com if there are any whatsoever. Alright, let's get on with this. Last session, our party of adventurers. Elzion, Queglod, Sasha, Malcolm, Vern and Rook. After a little bit of an adventure into hell from touching a small red orb, making some deals with some ice devils and ultimately taking on a rat man to join their party, the party decided that their next step would be to use the tuning fork to the ether that Burn otherwise had. As he cast the plane shift spell, you ruptured through the barrier that uh, wraps around the nine hells, and in doing so, pulled yourself through and to the ether. As you arrived, you felt the pain of the incursion, but you otherwise made, made a safe landfall onto the iron sands of the ether. Surrounding you in all directions are weapons of various designs, hammers, blades, axes, all sorts. Metal in all directions, shining from a sourceless sun in the reddish sky. With the rolling sands in all directions, the party was aimless somewhat. They discovered a strange location which feasted off of ley line energy was either imprisoning something or was some form of device all they knew is that they that the tuning fork that burn had was attuned to it of the party having that question out of the way they ventured forth coming across some strange creatures along the way including a large humanoid form of a kind of pale whitish sand uh, structure to him several blade uh, blades otherwise grew from the shoulders and back with a large hand that transformed into this massive maw blade a open mouth with razor iron teeth on the inside which otherwise scooped up sand and weapon alike and absorbed it into itself as it wandered round the party sought out its aid paying 50 gold to learn the direction of where they should be headed and thus they were pointed off to the direction of the road. They travelled quickly, using Felipe and two conjure animals. The party travelled over the hills and off towards where they were told the road was. But night began to fall. And as night fell, the creatures of the night came out to play. They didn't know what they were, but some strange four-armed creatures with, the, with this dark, muscly, textured skin covered in these small minerals and uh, gold and silver deposits that wrapped around their shoulders and parts of their body as they moved up they attacked in a pack towards the party who defended themselves as best they could with the plan going ahead burn being banished and sasha preparing to cast word of recall the party saw a bright light overhead a massive ball of orange and red with a smoke trail being left behind it as four forms crested over the top of a nearby hill not far from them. Large, ostrich-like birds made entirely out of metal sat atop these hills, and on top of them were four riders, all of whom had a pale complexion to them, 
not skin like them, but iron and steel. Veins of purple obscuring any features that they might have, and strange, to say the least. Byrne being the only one who might know what these are, the rest of the party was curious. They didn't know whether they were friend or foe, before one of them shouted out, Friend! Need help? As this shout was made to the rest of your party, Quaglod and Rook, it would be your turn in the initiative order if you wish to reply. Okay, well, I guess that's that's me. If, if Rook's not here, yep. Mm. Okay. Sam? So. Hmm? I don't know what that was, but... Fucking... Uh, just does... Fucking... Fuck off! <laughs> Tabs... Adverts... Fuck. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to, um... Call back to them, then. <clears throat> we could do with your help, if you... If you don't mind. Okay. I will take that as an answer, and I'll roll for their initiative. Pretty good all round. Okay. So, Quagler, what would you like to do on your turn? Um, well... The the main group of... of these dudes were retreated, right? But these ones up here are still... Uh, the these ones, the the main group up here, the big group, mm -hmm. they were still coming forward, but they were hesitant with the light. These ones were retreating, and they were otherwise. You watch as their skin begins to peel off, being pulled upwards towards where the light otherwise is. Interesting. Okay. Um. I suppose I will. Um. I will. I will use blast then. Okay, on which ones? Um, if these ones are in the light and pretty safe, I will okay. make sure they don't get away. Rook is prone, so you should be able to sit, he, uh, hit this one nice and easily. This one, again, is out in the yep. open, so that would be fine. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make Might, one attack yeah, roll for each. Get... So obviously this is the left one, this is the right one. Yeah. Well, that one. Just... Um, this one. Sorry. Uh, this these have advantage. Sorry. Oh right. Because cool. the creatures are, are currently considered to be blinded for the purposes of this, or stunned rather, not blinded. They cannot be blinded. Well, that is the advantage. Yep. And okay, that's two hits easily. Damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. As the two Eldritch Blasts go forward, you shoot them to either side uh, either side of you, hitting these two. As you do, you watch as their skin begins to peel away, and the muscle begins to be torn upwards as it begins to evaporate into these small particles of dust into the nearby um, air and atmosphere. These two are gone. These ones are also gone. Okay. We have one more Eldritch Blast. Hmm. Burn is naturally the... here. This is just yeah, where he yeah, was. I know. He... Um, but that is where he will retreat. Yes. Dispelled. And these guys are... Are they retreating as well? How big is the... Uh, they're currently stunned. They're just remaining where they are. The okay. area of the flare is about that big. Okay. Right. So I will I will assume everyone else has that one covered. We'll shoot the last one. Okay. Go ahead and make me an attack roll. Again, advantage on the hit roll. Okay. Oh. Again, hit. Yeah. Seven points of damage. As you go and you mm -hmm. shoot forward, you strike against the surface of it. You watch as the force breaks away a portion of it, and it seems to take more damage than it otherwise should, as a large chunk of its flesh kind of gets dislodged from its body and shunted onto the uh, onto the sand nearby, where it proceeds to disintegrate into small particles of ash. Okay. okay. Is that your turn? Uh, I'm pretty happy standing in the middle of the light, so yes. I'm... Okay. Rook is going to get back up. He's currently concentrating on Zephyr Strike. 
Uh, actually, he would have had to have rolled because he got hit by a rock, didn't he? Uh, okay. Yes. Oh. Yep, that's a fail, so there goes his concentration. 5, 10, 15. He's going to move over and make an attack, ro attack roll against these guys to try and finish them off. Uh, hit. Doing enough damage. That one's already damaged. Second one, which is the green one, hits. Uh, not quite enough damage. Next attack, hits. That'll be enough. And then, so this one and this one are disintegrated. And then he's going to move up and he's going to attack that one. Again, this is with his bonus action because Great Weapon Master, he can do that because he got a kill. And that is, yeah. Doubled, that's enough. That thing's dead. Dead. Super dead. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I believe his movement speed is 40. 40 or 30. I think it's 35, actually. So, yeah. That'll do. Okay. Uh, end of his turn. You watch as one of the individuals on top of, top of the hill kind of looks over. Um, says something in a language that none of you understand or would be able to hear given the circumstances. You watch as he points out a finger and this other red ball begins to form at the end of it as he shoots it out uh, in this direction. He is going to put it right here. As Isn't he does. That quite large. What for? I, anything. Yeah. What? As he fires it out, you watch as it glows and burns in the uh, air around, and you watch as the one near you fades. As this happens, you watch as they all begin to recoil, and they are all stunned, as they all kind of hold their position shaking and quivering, with their skin kind of peeling away. Even the large one, it kind of holds its position, shielding its face as much as it can, as parts of its uh, arms and torso begin to peel off. Um... You watch as he shouts something out in that moment before you watch as one of the other individuals jumps off of the back of the large ostrich, kind of goes down into a prone position with a large crossbow and is going to take a shot at this one, who is currently stunned. Yep. Hits. And that's going to kill that one. She's going to take her second shot at that one. That is a natural 20. I don't think I need to roll for damage. That should be enough. I'll just roll anyway, just in case it's a 1. No, that's not. Alright. That one's Instant gone as well. Murder. Yep. As she takes those two shots, each of the crossbow bolts striking into them with this kind of dull purplish flame on the end. As it strikes each of them, you watch as they burn up and turn to ashes where they are as they crumble to the ground. Before she turns her attention to the, uh, before she gets back up and remounts onto the back of the ostrich. Uh, it is Burn's turn. Um, Burn can't really do anything. Um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I can drop my concentration when it isn't my turn. So uh, I'd say you don't even really be able to drop it on your turn. Okay. Yeah. Um. So now it is the other help's turn. Um. One of them shouts to you. Uh, okay. Do any of you understand Primordial? Oh, I can't surprise you. No, to... I don't. Yeah. Is that related to deep speech in any way? No. Yeah, that that's the most exotic language I have. It's, it's the speech of the deep. I, I speak deeply. No one knows Primordial? Uh, no. If it's some form of elf and I know it, but not primordial. Uh, written script, I believe it is, but um, spoken, no. Pro wouldn't, wouldn't help spoken, not really. That's like me trying no. to read German. Um, Bird probably does. I'm checking uh, Infernal and... I mean, he can't hear it, but it would just be nice yeah. to know. Yeah, Infernal can't, and Jamie can't, so nobody understands this language. They shout something out. None of you respond. None of you understand. Um, starts making a hand gesture, which you believe to be come towards them. All right. Um, Down with that. The other one, which you can see is a fully hooded 
uh, one gets down off of his large ostrich and you watch as he plants his staff into the ground as he brings his hands together you watch as this small bit of iron sand begins to grow as he pulls them away from one another as it begins to form into this massive spear as he pulls it away and upwards the spear begins to spin rapidly a large forked end to it as he otherwise pushes his hand forward he's going to make an attack roll versus the giant sasha i want one okay i know that Me too. hits doesn't crit but that does hit okay It's about average. 41 points of force damage as the spear jams into the surface. Oh, that's doubled because it's vulnerable at the moment. Okay. So, never mind. Uh, 82 points of force damage as it otherwise strikes into the surface of the giant. You watch as it tears through a portion of its torso and rib cage, scattering it behind into dust as it otherwise holds itself there. Giant. Stunned means you automatically fail saving throws, correct? Strength and dex wise? Oh, God, where's my thing? Possibly, probably. Yes, yes, because it counts as incapacitated. Okay, in which case you watch as the giant is thrown 5, 10, 15 foot back and falls prone. As the spear forces it backwards as it slides to a halt, falling backwards onto its back. As the um, spear kind of jammed into it. You watch as he kind of uproots his staff from the ground and is going to attempt to climb back on the the bird on his same tire as a natural one no he fails to climb back on as he begins to struggle to try and get on he seems to be older than the others okay uh it is their turn these ones are stunned yay just tell you now they're getting fireballed as far as that one can get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Are they still doing this? 20, 25, 60, yeah. 65, 70, 75, 80. Okay, maybe they're getting fireballed. Okay. Um, two attacks versus Rook with advantage. Because of pack tactics. That one misses. <sighs> that misses. Bite misses. One claw hits. Second claw misses. Third or the third bite misses. So one claw hits. Rook takes five points of damage. Yay. I believe it's then two because of his defense thingy. Uh, their weapons are currently classed as magical. Okay. I believe. Yes. Their weapons are currently classed as magical because they are in the dark. Alright, so these guys really don't like the light then. No, they don't. Okay, end of their turn as they have nothing else to do. More of them begin huddling up in the distance, but you watch as the big one goes down, there is hesitation with these ones closest to it. Yes, the Cymax creature's down, guys. Uh, Malcolm and Sasha, it is your turn. Do you want me to kill these guys or, or, or weaken these guys? Oh, just kill him. Okay, cool. Do you wish to... Um, are going to take any hostages? Do you wish mm -hmm. to end your concentration on banishment, by the way? Um... Well, this feels like it would be a really bad position to bring Burn into. Um, but they've already moved, so... Don't. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let it be for the moment. Okay. Um... What I would like to do is just yell out Lumos Maxima. Okay. Oh, your shiny dwarf. Your uh, drift glow pulls from your pocket, and you watch as it erupts into uh, into light. As it does so, you watch as these ones within the thirty foot radius of the daylight effect immediately begin kind of like screeching back, kind of pulling away, putting their claws where they can try and block parts of them like their head and their torso but 
to no avail as bits of them begin to peel away. They are all stunned. Nice. Now I, I uh, my concentration. This one as well. Now you end your concentration. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and burn returns. As burn returns, I... he goes from pastures green to sandy many things with arms in front of him but they're all stunned <laughs> as the light is otherwise burning he looks over and he sees the four figures that's about it yeah oh, this is and just now as weird burn to me is... as it is you burn and now burn is vulnerable to radiant damage because he's a vampire <laughs> Okay, Everyone. well, I hope these guys don't deal radiant damage. Yeah, I would why. be impressed if they did. I've been nicely clustered for my fireball with no allies around. Ah, it's only burn, it's fine. He's not here to protest. All right, Malcolm. Yeah. If you wish to get up, Sasha, you can. You know I can bring him back if he dies. Um, drinking a potion is a burn attack, right? Yes. Are you getting up, Sasha? I've... Why have I been picked up? Are, are, you, are you prone standing or not? Up? You're prone, mate. You gotta continue with the okay. Elysian plan? Right, he didn't answer, he's staying prone. Alright, Malcolm. What? What? Uh, I asked you four times, are you getting up or are you staying prone? Oh no, I'm staying prone. That fucker's still alive. <laughs> I am staying sat the fuck down. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, drinking a potion is a bummer, right? Correct. Alright, uh, I am going to drink my potion of growth. Okay. And then I'm... Oh, you're currently concentrating it. on um, Core Lightning, if you're interested. Yeah, I, I am, but that doesn't really do much for me right now, because I'm turning into Dragon. Okay. Young White Dragon, with the Potion of Growth only. With the Potion of Growth effect still on you. Okay, should I just end the concentration on Core Lightning? Yeah, I'm not really going to use it. Okay. Young White Dragon... Oh. A huge creature. Uh, <laughs> you immediately spawn into the storm sphere. Make me a strength saving throw, please. Uh, let me quickly pull up the stats of this dragon real quick. Does it do so? I believe it has a plus four. Uh, this one down six and white. Uh, yes, because it doesn't have proficiency in it. Okay. Go ahead and make me a strength saving throw then, please. I had no idea that's what that was. Okay, that is a fail as you take four points of bludgeoning damage. And this is all difficult terrain, by the way. That, I mean, does that affect me flying? Yes. Okay. Uh, you said four? Four. Four points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going, like, uh, Ten feet ish into the air. Okay, so that'll be ten feet into the air is twenty feet of your movement. Okay, and then uh I have ninety. Okay. Uh I'm just gonna try and get wait, can I get to here? 45, 45, 50, 55 would be there. I have 90. Okay, so, so yeah, you'll be fine if you want to position yourself. Uh, I'm going to be... Here. Okay. The ball play, come. We'll see what it pays off for. No, no, nothing else I can do now, so... Okay. Alright. That was going to burn attack and end the action. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Ending your turn there. It is the Red One's turns. They're all stunned. Um, except for well, these two are stunned. 
These ones are going to move back and begin regrouping. Okay. Mayhem. Uh, that is the end of their turn. Elzion. Finally. Okay. Right, sorry. Uh, damn it. I was going to fireball her. You still can. I can, but I don't... Is burn resistant to fire? Mm hmm. You'll have to find out. I, don't I know. feel that's something we would know. I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, you know, he's never said it before. traveling together for a long time. He's never said it before, so... I don't think, I don't think okay. he is. He has got... Okay. Uh, he has got an effective health of 141 at the moment, though, so... Well... Still, yeah. I know Infernal, and he would be pissed if he knew I fireball. It's fine. He doesn't have to know. He will find out because I just, will. He could just him. cast counter spell. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I presume I can see over here. Uh, with the light. Yes, you can. Even though there's, there's dark, I presume it's sort of working as like a big floodlight thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a big floodlight. Oh, this gets weird. <laughs> Uh, so like that. If you hover over the small pip here, you should be able to see roughly what it's going to encompass. Or... Yeah. Um. I'm trying to get in as many as possible. I think I'm trying that's to go for the maximum numbers. Because if you go this way by one, you lose three. Lose. Yeah, I think you're right there, Chris. So it's better just to be there. I think. There. Okay. Uh. Roll the damage. Let... <laughs> they fail their saves. I was gonna say I was gonna do the fourth level, but you know what? I'm not actually, because eight d six is enough. Is it though? Yes. Sure. Hey, hey, That's thirty hey, damage hey. each. How yes. many of them? Are, where are they highlighted? Okay. Um, did I miss any? Yes. Uh, that one. Ba, 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 Fuck ba, off! Ba, 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 ba. All right. As you fire out the fireball, you watch as it encompasses and envelops them as they all shatter and scatter to dust behind them. The light breaking through their uh, hardened exterior and otherwise causing them to dissipate on the wind. We have Jamie coming. Ah. Yay! Wonderful. Huzzah! Hey, hey. Hi. Okay. Hi. And I think that um, yeah, yeah, Jamie's dead. He took two okay. damage. No, 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 I want to know. It's, it's not the fact that Rook's dead. Jamie's dead. Oh no, he didn't take two. I, he took I five. I am dead. About. Five. Uh, I don't have any. It's uh, fine. You're left. I don't have any bonus with... actions apart from taking Misty Step, which I'm not going to do right now. Can move. Um, I mean, you've been step. beckoned to go up here, and nobody's gone up here, so we're coming in a minute. Shout that in common. Elfish. Why not? <laughs> Elfish. Okay. They give a confused look. No, no, even better, Chris. Even better. Sylvan. They still give a confused look. Elzion is going to the old tongues. <laughs> oh my god. All also, right. I'm watching one particular hooker in Adamantia. <laughs> Alright, end of... Your turn. Uh, it's the giant's turn. It oh, skips its turn as it is stunned. Mm -hmm. And it will be no longer stunned once it reaches the captain's turn. Queglod and Rook, it is your turn. Rook, you're no longer right. concentrating on Zephyr Strike as I forgot you got hit by a rock and failed, so I removed the concentration. Okay. Fair. Um, on the plus side, all of these guys are stunned. All of these guys are stunned, so... Have fun rolling with advantage on all your to hits if you wish to. Ah, oh, <laughs> excellent. Then I'm just literally going to take it one at a time and swing it at these guys. Okay, go so ahead. The one closest to me with Weapon Master. Great, why great Weapon Master. Not? Okay, so go ahead and roll. Oh, don't forget your D12s. Well, two oh, D12s. Oh, look, a natural 20. Plus and a crit. <laughs> six. There you go. I think it's dead. Oh, I love this. I love this. Like... Okay, so. This is 19 plus what? 10. Plus 10, uh, is that, that, that's not included. Uh, plus 10 from your great master. weapon master, and then plus your strength bonus, plus the plus 2 from your weapon. So plus 16. 
Yep, cool. So that's 35 points of damage, doubled because they're in sunlight. This one takes 70 points of damage and dies instantly. Excellent, cool. And Their uh, the entire bloodline guy. felt that one. <laughs> next attack. Uh, it's dead. Next. Cool. With, with great we with great weapon master, you do more than double their health with each of this. So yeah, dead yeah, next. Dead. And then one more. Okay. Dead. Cool. Bam, nice. bam, bam. All right. So you move there for that last one, and, let, and position yeah. yourself as you see fit. I'll go there to give Burn some form of advantage. Okay. As you carve through them, just cutting them down one by one with the light radiating around them, you just carve. Th you just clean a house with these four. Um, leaving them as piles of dust within the sand, which begins to slowly seep through. Quagalod. Okay, I guess I'll um, try and mop up the rest of these. Okay, go ahead and make so the attack. I'll blast again. Okay, again, with advantage. They are stunned. Okay, first one there, I think. Okay. Hits. That is 11. Double that two, is 11. Damage. 22. That one is in sunlight. It is dead. Next. One below. Okay. Uh, hit. It's dead. Double. Boom. Wait, you roll doubles. Roll again. <laughs> and then the one below that. Okay. Hits. 10 times 2 is 20. That is more than their, 18, their 19 health. That one is dead. As your Fair three enough. Eldritch Blasts are shot forward as you kind of strafe around to the side, the three quills digging into them and again burning away at the now exposed flesh as the sunlight begins to peel away at them. They are otherwise... Do you realize how easy these things are to kill? Now you know their trick. But there is a sheer number of them and there are a lot. There are... Several hundreds on the horizon, off in the distance, which Felipe is informing you of. Now the flare is in place, but they seem to be slowing their advance. Well, now that I know that light is their problem, I know what to do if any. Okay. Um, but yes, I'm... Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. And in my turn. So, okay. One second. Um. The captain, he doesn't have anything that he can do, so he is going to shout, um, follow, quick, uh, Sasha, you gain a movement action, which you may move use immediately. Uh, where is he exactly? Uh, he's up in this direction. Yeet! Okay. I think you that's need to what I limit. You need to spend half your movement getting up, because you're still prone. And then... Yet... <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There's, there's the full yeet, and then we've got the yet. Yeet. Yeet. No, not yet. Yeet. Okay. Yeet. End of yeet. end of the captain's turn. His daughter is going to fire two crossbow bolts. One at this one. One at this one. Closest one. That is. Ooh, that's a miss. That's two very bad rolls. Okay. And the second one on the further one that hits. And that is yeah, that's enough damage. That one is gone. Um, she can't do anything interesting as a bonus action. She is, however, going to action surge. Okay, that one is dead. And then the one furthest away... Also dead. Nice. Okay. As she fires the shots, each of them kind of dig... Each of the arrows digs in, leaving this scorch mark as it burns and turns to ash once more. You are now free in your current vicinity. Um, it is Burns' turn. He's going to dash. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. And that is his turn. As he does not have comprehend languages. So, end of Burns' turn. Uh, it is the other of their troops' turn. As the old man is going to attempt to get back up on his bird, which is with slow success, taking half his movement, before they begin to turn tail and move back to in uh, this direction. Okay. Um, 
They have nothing more to do. They are st they remain stunned. There's nothing else to do there. Malcolm and Sasha. Ooh. I run. Oh, I forgot about Ratman. Hell Rat. He's going to run. He's going to follow Burn. Go. He's going to catch Go, his little concentration. Rat. Uh, oh, I'm, uh, oh, I can dash. Um, I'm also going to be like going. Hey, Burn. Um, we brought you back because we got help, so we don't need to go yet. So you can have some more time in in a Aether fun times. Let's not die. Woo! Cool. Let's go. Pep talk. Let's not die. Whoa. I'm gonna go here and offer a ride to as many people as I can carry. Okay. Which, given you're enlarged for another nine rounds, would be everyone who's currently still around if you want to. I'll say you hold the rest of your movement to keep going. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Elzian? Um, I am going to take the chance to ride on a dragon. Okay. You get on and, and wait. Does that take an action to get on the dragon? That's how be your movement. Probably not My movement? There. Excellent. Um, another fireball, I guess. <laughs> Why not? <sighs> Yeah, I can't, I'm guessing, can, can I see past this light? So you'd be able to create the epicenter here, granted it would still hit him. Um, but yes. Uh, yes, I can. You can see him past the light. Keep in mind, he is not stunned anymore because it has been his turn, or it has been but, his oh. turn since. So, it's still a fireball. It's still a fireball, mm. and you yeah. know what? Let's let's just use. You have to. Let's let's just use a sixth level spell slot. No, a fifth level. I would really love it if this guy just had like twenty health. He's not got. He's got more than that. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it'd be bloody funny if he did. Fucking up this way. It would be. The only thing is, he's got minus one to his deck, so he fails his deck save against you. So. Go ahead and roll me the damage. What level is it? Sixth, you said? Uh, I was going to go fifth. Fifth. So that is an additional 2d6. That's that, that. Yes, that's 10d6. Because what this is balance. That is 41. Pretty good. What about these ones? Do so these succeed? This one? Uh... Bear in mind, they'll oh, still take half damage, damage if they succeed. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, Which that is one's still 20 damage. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So, this one... Well, they both failed, so... This one is down, but he's... <laughs> yeah. And... How much damage? 41? 41. Yep. Oof. Okay. He is looking hurt. Sasha! I'm doing fire stuff! Be proud of me! I've always been proud of you, Elzian. But it is really fucking cool. I know. It's gonna get up. And burning things is the basis of this relationship. Okay. Yeah. Oh well. Okay, you guys aren't in bright light right now, so it is going to throw a rock at the Shit. source of the fire. Huh. Right. Wait, give me a Can second. I make the argument that owing to the fact it's flying, this might be a little bit difficult? He's not flying yet. He's waiting until the uh, others get on. Yeah. Yep. Okay, then. Uh, this is with disadvantage because he is firing beyond his maximum range and nobody is within range to marker you. Yes, marker lights. Oh, God. Gene Steelers with marker lights. What, whatever the fuck next. Uh, that is a 16 to hit you. To hit who? You. Me. Um, yeah. uh, shield. Okay. As you raise, as you raise your hands in quick succession, <laughs> the the rock otherwise <laughs> strikes the surface of the shield and is scattered um, beyond. As oh, Malcolm, you are oh. peppered with small bits of rock, um, which broke across Elzian's body. You watch as he did this, though. As he was there, he instinctually kind of like went to telekinesis it as it was flying towards him, and then immediately just like flails his hands in the air, and he watches this arcane shield just appear out of nowhere as he closed his eyes. Ah, perfect. 
Okay, I need to work on the somatic components, but I've got this. I like Elton's sort of turned into the most inept, competent wizard you've ever seen. Okay, that is its turn. It cannot do any more. Queglod and Rook. Hmm. <laughs> well, so I'm going to do that with Dragon. Okay. Can, can, I need a bit of a um, heads up. What's actually going on here? Malcolm is oh. offering to give you a lift to allow you to follow the caravan people who have otherwise told you yes. to follow them. The, the people that appear to have asked us to to get near, to get towards them. And have helped. And have helped us. They are friends for okay. now. They're a bit sus, if I'm honest. We might need to write them off, but... <laughs> okay, hold on. Why not? Alright, now I fly. Did it okay. cost my action to get on, or was it my move? Nope, just your movement. Okay, in that case, I'm going to Eldritch Blast this group. Okay, go ahead and roll me three three attack rolls. Um, yeah, I'm going to go, I guess, left to right is left. Well, oh, down dice to it. Uh, just, just roll three flat one, flat rub dice, and then if any of them miss, just re-roll the them. hits. Actually, no, re-roll all of them just in case of crits. All of them sure. hit, but re-roll just in case of crits. Uh, well, that's a crit. Yeah, there we go. Bye. <laughs> So, roll another d10. Ooh. Okay, yep, they're all dead. With that five, awesome. that made that one a hit and a, and a kill. All right. As nice. you fire off three more Eldritch Blasts, three of them are scattered and broken. As uh, Malcolm picks up and takes off 90 feet, 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, I'll say at this point, you're, you're definitely over top. You fly past. As you see Malcolm with your passive perception off in the distance, you see what looks to be a source of light off about... Probably a two-minute fly away. And how long does it... How long would it take these three to make it there? Uh, running, it looks like they'd probably they'd probably take three times as long. So maybe six, six to eight minutes. Uh, however, you see that the individual and the caravaneers are otherwise reaching down their hands to lift them up onto the birds. Ah, okay. Don't touch my dwarf. Sorry, Elsa and Z. Okay. Uh, the captain and the daughter are otherwise going to attempt to help these two onto birds. Um, yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, then the others are going to keep. Go uh, the other ones scoop up the hell rat and keep going. As you are dashing away, you can hear the sound of them moving behind you of these creatures, but they are not keeping up with you. They are a fair distance before you hear they begin to break off, and the sound of them dissipates. As you move towards a slowly glo growing, uh, glowing source ahead of you. Woo! Okay. Survival. Nope, that's the wrong one. Well, that sounded a lot worse than it was. I was about to say, are we about to go into a dungeon or something? Yeah, you're about to get killed. All right. Ah, shit. Yep. I knew we shouldn't trust these guys. Yeah, no. See, those guys back there were the good guys. <laughs> they were just trying to save <laughs> you. <laughs> well, you know, last well, time that happened. They were to save us from these terrible kidnappers. Yeah. All right. As you otherwise arrive at the uh, edge of their camp, traveling on the back of these giant birds or flying through the sky, you travel past more of these iron sands as you reach what looks to be a hardened rock platform. You see atop it what looks to be two to three large beasts of burden, similar to that of bison, but they've got one long horn that runs down the edge of their nose to a large point. And their body is entirely made up of iron, with small shards of um, and spikes of iron that stick out from their shoulders and their uh, hind legs on their thighs. As they stand, as they kind of lie there, one of them kind of lifts its head and looks over before resting its head once again. As you see more of the these metallic humanoids, which burn otherwise introduced as voidborn, otherwise approach. They dismount off of their large ostrich-like birds and kind of uh, pull them in as the uh, captain kind of goes over and goes uh friends yes thumbs up yes, yes. we believe so. uh, 
G good. Um, he kind of just turns and begins to speak in primordial to um, his allies behind uh, as they begin to talk to one another. You watch as the elderly one moves over and places his hand on his uh, on his shoulder, and you kind of watch this flash of energy travel through him as he begins to speak in perfect common. You should be able to understand me now. Uh, yes, very yes. clearly. Well, wow. Good. Um, I'll only be able to keep this up for about an hour. So we'll talk now and then get some rest. Um, who are you and why are you out here without sunlight? Um, well, uh, we didn't realize we needed it. Uh, we're traveler, uh, travelers, adventurers. You're fleshlings, we yes. We sort of had, yes. A group um, of idiots. More apt. Uh, yes, well, I just want to yeah. do this to see if, he, if it's comprehend languages. I say in the comic, uh, we came from the material plane where we've never been here before. We had no clue. Okay. Um, you say that in Draconic? Yeah, I, I want to see if this comprehend language is... Okay, he replies back in perfect Draconic, but the rest of you hear it in common. As he said, as this is the tongues spell. Ah, uh, tongues. Yeah. As he, re as he replies back, so you didn't come through the cities with a traveler then? No. Nope. No. Interesting. Well, um, we have a way to to leave, but uh, we kind of got uh, we were planning to stay the night and then got interrupted. I see. Um, well, you're welcome to sleep here if you wish. We should have we will be safe here for now. In the morning, we'll be heading off to the city. Is are you traveling there or were you leaving? We were we were looking for a city. Uh, we have to. Uh, head back to our own plane eventually, but we were trying to uh, find uh, a city whilst we were there. Uh, my friend uh, Burn, I gestured to Burn, uh, has um, something of a connection to this plane and was looking to find more about it. Okay. Um, Burn begins describing the city um, to which he kind of turn uh, as he describes a city made of iron um, with this large wall running around the outside of it on a hardened stone plateau, a series of three spires that otherwise grow, one taller than the rest, and the entire un the entire city itself is just built of iron. As he turns and says, Ah, you'll be heading to Ruala then, if the number of spires is correct. All of the cities in here are made of iron, but Ruala only has three. Three spires, that is. So you'll be heading there then. Uh, uh, I suppose that is the plan. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, we're heading that direct in that general direction. We've got to travel through there. You're welcome to tag along. Maybe we could share a story or two. Okay. Yeah, why not? Right. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, my name is Rola, by the way. As he kind of lifts his hand um, and gestures to himself. He's a little bit hunched, um, and although they're humanoid in um, kind of appearance with a metallic sheen around the outside of them, they still have like signs of muscle growth. Um, where his muscles are relatively tight, they're not packed, and he's not well built like one of the other ones here. Um they still show signs of like physical growth and organic growth to them um the notable thing that does catch or this is a general thing between all voidborn um they otherwise because their entire complexion is just made up of metal they are smooth on the outside uh, all the way through so they have no need for clothes outside of a cloak hmm. what's his name again uh, Rola. r o w l a do you want to ask okay no. 
I mean, yes, I want to ask. I'm not going to ask. <laughs> I'm just thinking it really hard, hoping one of them's a telepath. No, none of them are. Oh, what's the name of the city we're looking for? Ruala. R U U apostrophe A L L A. Okay, put that in the chat, Chris. That oh. I, I've already forgotten all of the things you just, the letters you just said. Ruala, the city of steel. Does that mean that, um, that name theoretically, has so many double letters? <laughs> still not as bad as Craticus. No, no, not as bad as that cursed thing. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I, I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce us all to um, what was it Roal? Roala. Roala. Or Ro Roller, sorry. Sorry, Ro Roller is the guy. Roala, Roala is, is the, the city. city. Yes, Roller. So Ra Ra Um Yeah, I would like to introduce us all. I, I'm Sasha. Um, this is Elzian. Uh, Quaglard. Uh, over there is Rook. Uh, this is, as I said, Burn, and uh, Malcolm is the. Are you still a dragon? Yep. And Ma that's Malcolm. Okay. Why did you ask if he's still a dragon? Clearly he is. Well, I don't know. He changes it a lot. It's a bit weird. The... Look at him. One thing to note: the beast of burden don't seem to be worried about him. Oh, that's fucking horrific. Uh, by the way, Malcolm's kind of like staring at these things. Malcolm shrinks. As your potion of growth yeah. only wears off. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I, 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 Actually, no, I, it, la it lasts an hour, so never mind. You, I thought it was one minute. One minute's just regular and large reduce, but this is potion of growth, so it lasts an hour. You good? I, 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 I'm going. I, I'm going closer to investigate these. I, I want to see what they are like. The people or the beasts? The beasts. They're new to me. Okay. Um, the beasts begin to stand up almost in defensively as Roller kind of moves over to them and kind of places, places his hand between you and them and goes, whoa, don't get too close. I, I, I just want to look. Uh, they're new to me. You can look from a distance or turn back to whatever form you were in before. I don't want to do that. I'm fine. I'm turning back into myself. Okay. <laughs> look, but don't touch. Stripper rules. Oh my god. Okay. Do you also want to end the potion of growth effect on you for the sake of. Yeah, sure. I don't right, need there we go. Anymore. So I don't need to worry about the big tiles. Alright, good. Check these over here. <laughs> okay. You approach moving over to one of them as they begin to settle down. They are, again, a hardened iron where you can see where their eye sockets otherwise are. They are a kind of a deep purplish energy, same as these, uh, same as the Voidborn, with their body kind of having various creases and veins almost running around the outside of this purplish energy. As they sleep, it slowly ebbs and flows as they get down to rest once again. So they're like actual creatures? Yeah, they seem to be. Uh, I, I look at him. What are these? These? They're it's... iron rhinos. Okay. Hmm. I, I, I would like to know the CR, please. <laughs> uh, they are not beasts. Aww. They are aberrations. It's fine. I can turn into them later. At which point you hear um, kind of a voice spoken from behind. Corvo. Salo Centric. As the feminine form otherwise begins to talk to um, Roller, he otherwise turns around, says a few things um, back in Primordial, which you all perfectly understand. No, that's fine. Head to sleep. I'll, I'll let them choose where they wish to sleep tonight. I'll catch up with you all later. As she otherwise goes over and gives him a hug before heading heading off. Well, good to meet you all. Um, yes, if you found your way in here on your own, I can't imagine that you're going to be... I can't imagine that, given the display you also showed, that you're not exactly weak, shall we say. <laughs> you're not like the other did fleshlings. We, did, we didn't get the whole light thing 
no, that's fair. If this is your first time here, it's understandable, but... Yes, night time is dangerous out here. Even more dangerous on the sands. Yes, we've got... What, what are those things? They're called Creoni. Creoni, hmm. They are relatively dangerous creatures that live out there in packs and massive hives. I should say in a massive hive. They all respond to a single queen. Oh, hive minds, wonderful. Yes, you're the giants too. They... I don't suppose it would be possible to deal with the queen. <laughs> Sasha? The... There's a reason I said there was a single queen. They don't just live here. Their burrows span across <clears throat> the entirety of the landscape. They live in the rock and the sand, and they're dangerous. They only come out at night to scavenge. Entire bodies are made of minerals and ash. They're an infinite in number. There's millions of them. <coughs> if you think you can take on that many, be my guest, but finding the queen will be difficult, especially seeing as they protect her with their life. Well, maybe later. I will pencil it in into the, into the calendar. Do I get the impression <laughs> the queen is... Below, well, the cardinal. Uh, yes, below. Yeah, given the nature of the burrows, they seem to go down, and with what he's suggesting, each of those three holes, which you'd already seen, all connect somehow to the large burrow, wherever this queen is. So it's like a giant ant's nest. Effectively, right. that is the ether in a nutshell. Saving graces, they only come out at night, and sun and sunlight otherwise destroys them. Hmm. Well, uh, that's 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 a thing. Okay. Is there any way? Is there any place up high? Like, what does the, the terrain around here look like? <coughs> I, I want to sleep somewhere high up. The terrain around here is entirely just dunes. Where you currently are, though, is a kind of a hardened layer of rock and iron road, which just runs along in a. Uh, in a straight direction with a little bit of curvature to it. It's There aren't really any high spots. The highest point is probably on top of the caravan. Which, the caravan which they have seems to be made up of three different carts. Each one is made up of entirely metal with what looks to be a heavy fabric that runs over the top of it. You see that one, the female who otherwise hugged him has since climbed on top of the one of the caravans and is currently lying there uh, as if it's a giant hammock. Uh, with her hands behind the back of her head, just looking up to the sky. And you see a number of them are otherwise lying uh, lying there as one of the uh, the largest one among them, um, who currently wields what looks to be this very brutal battle axe. But the entire thing is on one large, um, uh, one large handle. On one side, it just goes into this square edge, which comes all the way down and wraps around both hands where they hold it. Uh, with a kind of a point at the end. I'll see if I can draw it here to give you a better description. So, something like... Uh, with somewhat of a curve to it. Like that, with the handholds being here and here. And it's all just one blade. On one edge. Hmm. Interesting. He currently has that kind of sat to his side as he's otherwise the largest and the most muscular of these figures as he sits there just staring out across each of you, just keeping an eye. Mm. Well, right. you're welcome to pick your quarters and or take your rest where you feel most comfortable. Um, I'd recommend staying close to the torches. Just points to a few of the rods around here which are otherwise emitting this kind of dull reddish glow. Stick close to them. Take your rest. We'll move in the morning. Right. Will do. Uh, good question, Chris. Um, the light, the, just the normal Lumos, is that mm -hmm. infinite as long as I don't turn it off? Correct. Uh, in that case, once... Um, I believe, it, well, if we're I believe it lasts an hour and you have to re-emit it, but it acts like the light cantrip. But otherwise it is, is infinite. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll stay near a, a, a torch and um, 
I'll, I'll say no to it. And I was thinking of just like popping up and just being like, I'm going to sleep under my bowl. Uh, but no, I'll, I'll, I'll find a torch nearby and, you know, just have myself a nice, a nice lie down and sleep. Uh, probably trying not to encroach too much on their space. Okay. You know, respectful distance. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to do before you bed down for the night? Uh, no. Mm. Hey, Elzian. Not really. Yeah, Sasha. You know, once we've completed all the saving the world shit and killed the Prince of Blood and all that. Prince of Blood? Do you want to... The Prince of Blood? Ah, blood. I thought you said blood. Uh, yes, you were saying. Right. Do, I... Do you want to come back here and try and find and murder this queen? I mean, we've probably got a couple of other queens we need to kill first, but Oh yeah, well, I I, I was assuming your mother is part of the, is, is in some way related to the saving the world shit we got to do. That's a fair point. Like, she's not a queen; she's a bitch. Um, <laughs> why not uh, have a little crazy. holiday? I'd call her a royal bitch, but she hasn't even gotten that far. <laughs> she she was once, you know, a celestial being. And, yeah, but she's a bitch, though. Oh, yes. But that's like me trying to claim the mask is a good person. He's yeah. not. But. Has he fucked with us? Again, didn't your mother try? I believe my mother did. Oh, God. That's spicy. Hmm. Yes. But yeah, well, we'll come back here. Uh. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to get smited if I think about that anymore, so good night, sweetheart. Nice night, Sasha. You, you were trying so hard to find one that didn't feel weird, didn't you? Yeah, I was trying to find one that was related to fire, actually. My little spark plug. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's a spark plug? I don't know. What? Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. My little ember. I think Mapple was trying to say something. Mm -hmm. you... No, oh, I think. Before... Yeah. Did you have anything to say, Tad? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Been As you all bed down for the night, you get some rest. You hear kind of light shuffling and there are moments where you kind of wake up and you can see the faint glimmer and shine of those things kind of just scouting around and moving but they don't seem to get close they're just surveying your situation as you wake you see burn is otherwise sat there just he's got his eyes closed hands on his spear as he hold, as he sat there holding it you kind of watch as he stands and looks around as the reddish glow and light begins to return for the morning he uh, for the morning here as the dawn breaks you watch as the entirety of the land gets flooded with this red rustic color as the sourceless light of this sun wherever it may be returns the wind is harsh and is otherwise blust uh, blustering and blowing through as you kind of look around and see it's a little bit harder visibility with these sands picking up a bit more but nothing that you can't handle you watch as uh, one of the other forms, another feminine form, uh, different to the other one, goes around and otherwise hands out what looks to be these uh, metallic purple shards to each of the caravan members. As the um, uh, as Roller walks over to you, the other elder elderly one places his hand on his shoulder again. You watch as magic leaves his palm uh, into Roller as he goes. You can hear me, correct? Yes. Good. Um, we don't have any food that you might enjoy or like, so I hope you've got your own. Um, I pull out my cooking supplies and start cooking. Ah, perfect. Um, we'll be setting out in about half an hour, so prepare to leave then. General, no general notes that I want to put forward of this. If we ask for your help, please provide it. 
if we are, if I say anything such as to stay hidden or to do whatever, follow my command. We know these planes better than you, given you came here yesterday. And if I tell you to run, you run. Don't fight. Yeah. Don't try and stand your ground. Run. So, do what you say and don't ask too many questions? And you could ask questions. Up. Probably just won't understand them. After this wears off, anyway. That's a fair point. Okay. Uh, if any of you wanted to switch up your spells, now is your time to do so, given you just woke up from a long rest. Also, benefit from the long rest. I'm just going to roll. Swap out one I can swap invisibility out or in for one other spell. I need new spells, man. Um... Yeah, scrolls back in Oregon and you'll get paid once you've closed the portal and you know. I find a way to kill Steve. Elephas is like, oh, we went on a simple bounty. Three episodes later. We're in the Ether now. <laughs> okay. In and uh... out. Quick bounty. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. Uh... We literally did just turn up on a portal and just went, I'll be a quick in and out, won't it? Yeah, effectively. I... Oh. Damn me. Burn gets 28 temporary hit points. Oh, just long rest. I got my, I got my hit points yep. back. Yep, get your hit points back. Get your spell slots back. Whatever you need. Oh, I can't do anything to understand them. Uh, I asked them if... Uh, burn they... is going to... He is going to lose the use of... <laughs> Go, Chris. Shut Suds down. What were you saying, Suds? <laughs> Monster. Okay, he's going to learn comprehend languages. There we go. Wow. Yeah, carry on. What were you going to say, Suds? Oh, uh, I was just going to ask them if they know any other languages than the one they were speaking. Um, I know a little bit of common, but I'm not good at it. Um,. Most of what we speak is just the Aether language, what we know. We don't speak any other languages outside of that. Um, uh, he turns around and goes, um, My father, um, Lurik, pointing to the elderly gentleman, uh, he knows Infernal, but... That's perfect, I understand not, that one. It's not good Infernal. Same as my common. It's not great, but it's doable. Oh, damn it. <laughs> well, there went that. Okay. Well, if you're ready to leave. Let's have yeah. no. Probably finish making breakfast for everybody and everybody's eight. We'll arrive at the city within the day. Okay. Um, Elzion, you rolled it before. Roll me a d10. Mm -hmm. Or a d100 oh, if you wish. Make it a bit more interesting. It's up to you. I would have rolled a d100. Yeah, yeah, I would have. Okay. <laughs> Fuck it. Can I? Can I? Okay, that. 41. If you, if you want to take that, that's okay. 41. 41 and a 6. I mean, we've got three more rolls, so if three more people want to roll, I'll yeah, take roll it. A d10. I I'll got do a D hundo. Okay. I'll do a D hundo too. Yeah, we got D hundos. Uh, I got oh oh my god. Ninety eight. I got one. Ooh, okay. You got shame it was to divine intervention. Alternatively, I possibly got a hundred. I can't remember how no, it works. No, that's one. You got okay. A one. You got a one. So you got a one and a ninety eight. That is very <laughs> interesting. Okay, just so you know, Suds, your 53 is a nice day's travel, as is your 41 and 6. 98 and 1, on the other hand. Okay. Uh oh. Completely conflicting. As... Hell and heaven crash into each other. As you're, as you're traveling, um, what would you guys like to be doing for you on the journey? It's a light sandstorm, but it's not like a heavy, you can't see anything. It's just light, light winds, the dust and sand is picking up, but that's about it. Well, being me, I'm flying up a little bit above everybody and i'm looking around seeing what i can see learning what this landscape looks like because it this is all new okay make me a perception check please 
I'm looking around to see if anything resembles my axe. Uh, okay, in which case I will say make a perception check with disadvantage oh. given you're traveling at speed. Well, uh, that, that is, is a, a, at a mediocre speed. 30, Can I, I be um, studying all these people we're with uh, and the animals that are made of metal? Yeah. Um, in order to sort of discover, I'm trying to understand with either medicine or perception or insight or something to basically work out how they move to try and convert that into my creations. Uh, medicine, I will say, will be the more biological side and how their bodies will move, plus the actual, like, inside physiology are the best guess. I will say disadvantage, unless you want to cut one open. Um, yeah, I'll do disadvantage. If you want, what were the other ones? Insight, that would probably be just from general mannerisms and trying to maybe pick up on tropes or language bits. Um, so one of those two. Uh, Both okay, so medicine... I'm basically just trying, I, I, I want to work out is, like, is there a way to replicate the ease of movement here? Um, uh, for, like, my enchanting or my metal or my metal work or anything. Okay, go ahead. Okay, it's not terrible. Uh, which skill do you want that to be? Medicine, if it's for the ease of movement stuff. Okay, that is a dirty 20. Okay. Looking at them and kind of trying to gauge how they work they are one entire sheet of metal their entire body is just one sheen but their movements are flexible and allowing as if the metal is growing and shrinking in accordance with how they are moving it's strange where plate arm will be made up of many segments they're just one bit you begin to slightly pick up and kind of with a little bit of burns help and understanding as he's concentrating the energy which seems to flow around their body in the purplish veins and lines which Go just cross their entire body seem to for one reason or another allow the metal to be flexible but strong still if they're as strong as the things were back then or as strong as they seem these things will probably be as strong as plate but the flexibility allows them to maneuver Fun. whatever this energy is you don't know but it's probably the source of it the inside of them you imagine without cutting one open they seem organic they have no mouth their eyes are made of energy they have no pores or anything which shows outside pieces so it's hard to say what their insides are like even with a even with a dirty 20 it's a little bit difficult to tell okay anybody else want to do anything before i get to the 30 perception quite a lot or else you uh i'll just a bit Bored, really? I mean, he's not. He, he, he's keeping half an eye out, so if he can find an umbrella sword. Go ahead, make me a perception check with disadvantage to try and find an umbrella sword. Maybe you find your old one. Who knows? <laughs> that, that, this is the dream. Probably. But well, I made what? one. Yeah, I know, but Aww. if you can find his old ether copy, he has his old one back. Oh, true. <laughs> Or if you find... world umbrellas. I mean, or if, even or if, if he finds the new one, he can afford, he can bring them together and make a plus one umbrella sword. Even at disadvantage, Chris, that's still an uh, still a twelve. Yeah, Unfor looking around, there are a lot of weapons. Actually, no, no, you're traveling on the road. There are. It's fairly devoid of weapons. Any weapons that are around here are really far out, and kind of you see them on occasion. Um, when you're traveling past kind of the rolling sand dunes, you see a few of them in occasion scattered on the distance, but that's about it. Um, quite a lot? Mm. Um, no, I've nothing special to do during the journey. Okay. Um, you watch as, uh, Malcolm, as you're kind of flying overhead, you're kind of getting a look out and you see what looks to be some form of reflective surface off in the distance, a large reflective surface about four travel or four hours into your travel it's relatively far off in the distance like maybe three to five miles at your fly speed traveling at if like trying to hurry at least get there you could potentially reach there in 15 minutes at your fly speed walking there at a regular pace would probably take you a better part of an hour maybe an hour and a half um you see this like massive reflective surface as you kind of look off and inspect it um, the rest of you watch as the uh, younger female form climbs on top of the wagon, pulls out what looks to be this large spyglass and begins to look down before she says, Carnival! Carnival! Send C3! As she speaks out, you hear the uh, UC Roller kind of turn back 
and again a noise is uh, emitted um i would say who's proficient in insight i am okay uh Has everyone yes except I, I, I am okay yeah i am okay what are you i do not think i am okay those no. of you who are proficient in insight as he responds you seem to f you seem to hear a faint level of panic in his voice as he speaks back before she um before she responds nozeth shithrin he kind of stops and kind of looks back um okay um you watch as he says a few things out to the rest of the family he hands the reins over to the larger more bulky figure um as he moves up and otherwise grabs the reins on the uh, front caravan as he jumps off and otherwise goes to grab a hold of one of the uh, large birds the other female form does so as well the uh, elderly gentleman who's otherwise uh, oh no he speaks out in common because in fact uh, such so is currently flying up in the air he speaks out in common um not trouble follow if you can keep up or interest okay. i'm going i, I i'm going i want to see what this is yeah which is mountain yes, disappears off flying overhead fuck it Craig lord can you felipe i'll see if i can I'll see if i can keep up i will turn into um no, little Felipe. <laughs> no! I'm no, I'm not. No! Gonna... Help me! Okay. Uh, you turn into little Felipe <laughs> and you fly off as Sasha shouts that out as you go and. How go... fast are they flying? Uh, Malcolm is dashing given his speed. Uh, it's 40 it's... feet, isn't it? Uh, I'm flying at... at. With dashing, I'm flying at 100 feet. Okay. So you're traveling at 100 feet around Quake Lodge. You're 60 feet as a raven? Uh, I believe. Okay, so you're slightly faster than Malcolm, but you can yeah. catch up if you wish. 50? Yeah. Okay, so you're the same speed as Malcolm, so you'll be able to keep up with him. The birds uh, are 60 feet, so they'll be uh, leading the charge. So they'll be going... You know what? No, they won't. <laughs> I'm using a key point because I've gone faster than them. Keep in mind that this is over an extended period of time. They will pull away eventually. It, it, how far did it look like it was? Five miles. Five miles. Okay. Yeah. So this Never is maybe mind. a uh, maybe a fifteen-minute journey for you to fly at your given speed. All right. Let's go. Anybody else trying to keep up with any methods? I, I thought about I could run and stuff, but I'm gonna be there forever. And that's Elgin is me. just going to walk alongside Sasha. And just be like... <sighs> no, I'm jo I'm I'm dashing, so you're just gonna uh, go. Dwarves are very good. Burns, Burns, distance, yes. Burns, gonna turn around and just say, uh, "Who wants to go to the rest?" I of you? do. I I I, I would also like to go. Okay. He's... Make sure there's not any spell slots that we might need. It would be nice if I had my griffin. Uh, <laughs> well, we don't have a griffin. He's no, going no. to pop a... a magic carpet. One, two, three. All of you want to go. He does as well. He's going to say, I can... I, I and two others can go. I, my like to go but... I don't think we should leave anyone on their own. I mean, they're not going to be on their own. They're going to be with the rest of the caravan. Yeah. I I personally would like to go because I feel like this is the one I rolled. I want to see what happens. I <laughs> will stay. Okay. Elgin stays behind. Slightly disappointed. Fine, I get it. But I can't I can't I can't twin spell fly as he casts fly on Sasha himself and on um 
me... Rook. Hopefully. As the three of you take off with a 60-foot fly speed, you are otherwise faster than everybody else, uh, with the exception of the um, land birds. As you begin to fly, making your way towards whatever this form is. I would like everyone who is moving to make me a athletics check, please. Athletics? I'm all right at them. You don't have to do that. Um, Quaglod, I believe you're unaffected by the, by any form of exhaustion or anything. So you succeed, but otherwise uh, fly, fly at speed. You can land on Malcolm whenever you need to rest. It's fine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I speed. Uh, 15. Yeah, 15. Uh, Burn got a 14 plus whatever, so he's fine. Sasha? By the way, can I... Uh, I got a dirty twenty. Can I give um, whilst I'm in the air? Can I just give um, give uh, Quagmire a dirty look? Okay, Quagmire as Felipe is going to look somewhat offended that you would be upset about. Me. <laughs> <laughs> you left me. Okay. You left your partner. You all managed to yeah, keep we, up. We with... count as a single entity now. Fuck you. <laughs> You you all travel with good speed, making you all travel with good speed, making your way towards um Oh no, I remember why he doesn't have ha ha ha. He can just pull out lore and he already and he already knows the languages. Forgot about that. Anyway. Um So as you're travelling with good speed, you see before you the shining form begins to doesn't get smaller, but it becomes begins to get a lot more clear as you watch as the birds otherwise veer off to one side. Do you follow or do you keep moving towards the main form? Um, I mean, I'd, I'd probably go down with the birds. Yeah, probably. Like they said, they know this better than us, so maybe there's something about it as to the reason why they veered off a little. Okay. Maybe this thing has anti-air defense. It you might get shot down by a flat cannon or something. It's, it's not that. It's not that bad. Uh... <laughs> Natural one party gets wiped by a flat cannon. <laughs> I knew it. Oh man. Okay. Nope. That's the wrong one. Uh, where is it? Oh, is it something I can ride? <laughs> it's not. You know what? Screw it. I don't think I have the sound for this one. All right. Oh, well. as you keep moving forward, making your way towards this massive form, it becomes clearer and clearer to you. With that total of a 30, you begin to see what looks to be a hardened metallic form. It's cylindrical in form with kind of these ripples that run along the surface of the metal itself with the large veins running through them. You see the end of it is burst and almost busted open like a bent cannon where the metal has been torn to either side and you can see a large pit of disrupted sand nearby. As you begin to get closer you see what looks to be the cylinder is about 30 foot wide in diameter at the rounded end um, and it goes down. You probably estimate for about 200 feet as it is otherwise buried mostly in the sand, but you see a large portion of it otherwise lies in the sand itself. As he, as you pull up close to it, you watch as he, as uh, Roller gets off, moves over and kind of places his hand on the surface of it and just begins to mutter to himself. Uh, I would like everyone to make me a nature check, please. Disadvantage. Um, Elzion, make me a perception check. You got elf vision. Let's see if you can see it. Disadvantage, I'll say, on the perception. Aww. What do my elf eyes see? I want that, that 20 so bad. It's a 10. Okay. <laughs> Three. Uh, Rook. Well. Uh, nature. Yep. Four One. Off, burn as well. Top. So, 16? 16. Okay, it's not bad. Burn's nature is probably no better. Um, two, so for him it's fourteen. Okay. Like Seventeen. Rook. You look at this thing and it looks vaguely familiar. 
Okay. Familiar. How so? You've seen Perfect. this kind of thing before. I have. You all have, but you don't know where from. <laughs> Can anyone do a history check? I'll say, <laughs> given you're the only one who succeeded, you're the only one who I'd what? say would get an intelligence check with disadvantage. Everybody else will have to either guess or... Aww. Okay, I I'll give succeed. it a shot. I thought I did. What did you get total? 17. Oh, sorry, I thought... Okay, you were saying about the no, 20. I, I no, 17, I, I I yeah. You recognize this thing as well. Go ahead and make the intelligence check with disadvantage. Oof. No, that's not going to be great. Intelligence check. Intelligence has plus one. I've never seven. wanted to do that 20 is more. That's a lie. I want to have the same amount every time. Okay, um, that's a 19. 19. Seven. You look at this thing. You look slightly like you fly up to it. And you kind of stop and look at it. <clears throat> You've been eaten by one of these things before. We have. As you look at this. One. This is a purple worm shell, but it's made of metal. Uh, you watch, Jesus Christ. You watch as he begins to kind of note and document this thing down. Purple worms, by the way. It's about 20 foot wide mouth, probably about 120 feet long. This thing's 30 foot wide and 200 feet long. This thing's big. How old does this thing look? Like, uh, make me a medicine check. I would like to. This know. isn't a carcass. This is a shell. Uh, can I can I make one too? Uh, go ahead. A medicine check. Medicine, medicine check. That's Twenty. Yeah. Twenty. Uh, mhm. Mm uh, also twenty. Okay. <laughs> the two of you kind of look at this and you go, "Huh, it's a shell." Insects shed their shells when they go to grow. This, was, this bastard must be a behemoth. This was left behind when this thing grew. The rest of you kind of look at Malcolm as, and Rook as they come to this realization that this thing grew out of its shell. You watch as oh, he's kind of poop slips. <laughs> as you watch as Roller's kind of taking down notes for this, and he kind of looks about at the rest of you. Um, as he kind of just looks, look up, looks up at you in general, uh, all of you in general, and kind of just gestures to go back. I, uh, I, I'm taking note of where this is. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can see any landmarks nearby or anything that can give me an idea of where this is, just in case we come back. Make me a perception check with disadvantage. Well, dice don't fail me now. Okay, you failed me. <laughs> okay. With no di with no sun to use as a bearing, no distance, no markers, no nothing, you have no idea where you are, and trying to mark this place is nearly impossible. As um, Burn uh, kind of fly flies down gently, um, you watch as he kind of lifts his hand for a moment, and... Uh, kind of stops him in his tracks before he casts Comprehend Language on himself. Um, before he says, speak. As he translates for you, Rowler says the following. Um, we're done here. We've got this location marked down. We'll be selling this to a salvage team. You're worth quite a bit. It's a good find. He just kind of looks up at, looks up at you, gives you a nod. What is it? Can you ask? Oh, it's a it's purple, a purple worm. worm. But much, much bigger. And it shits its shell when it grows. There's, at of this. there's a response mm. from Rowler as he uh, as he says, Not purple. Iron. Iron worm. <sighs> this is well, a young adult. Young? Oh, God! <laughs> 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 okay, uh... I, 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 I ask, uh, do, do, do they have eggs? 
He <laughs> looks at you quizzically. Doesn't seem to understand what an egg is. How do baby? Baby. Again, doesn't Young. seem to understand. How do they reproduce? His common, his common isn't great. Oh, right. And comprehend languages is different to tongues. In uh... this situation, nobody speaks his language, and Burns able to understand him, but can't speak back to him outside of common. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Egg. What... Can... At which point he gestures and you watch oh, as them on the birds begin to move yeah. away from the location. Yeah, I'm just flying through trying to figure out what is a best representation of... Mm, if only you could do minor illusion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can... Wait. No, I can't do that. <laughs> wizard can, that who was left behind. <laughs> the illusionist <laughs> wizard. Speaking of which, you've kept traveling throughout this and mm. the, the caravans kept going. So you're kind of like watching as you see your friends in the distance slowly begin to get closer. Um, as you make your way back, the um, fly spell ends shortly after you arrive back on the caravan. As he passes off the notebook back to one of the others uh, in the caravan. He watches he passes it to a um, fairly short um, female form. One who you haven't really seen or interacted with yet. As she takes the notebook, kind of take, rolls out a large bit of parchment and paper, which you see to be some form of coordinates, and begins like note, notes down on it, a small marker um, on it, and kind of rolls it back up and places it in a map case. Interesting. <sighs> okay. The, I need to get a map of this place. And you watch I as he know. pats the old man on the shoulder, who otherwise just puts his hand on the shoulder and. Um, Casts tongues. Ah, tongues as he turns around and says so that was a interesting find don't see those mm. very often often at all is that a good thing or a bad thing good that's mm -hmm. the shells a good thing that thing will be worth a lot of money well a lot in general but <laughs> we're, a, we're a couriers we don't have the equipment for salvaging that thing must have been unearthed in one of the more recent sandstorms. Is that normal metal? Or... It's the it's strange. same skin metal, same kind of stuff that we are, and the same things that they are. Pointing to the iron rhinos. That thing was a young young adult. Those things grow big. That's the reason mm. when I say run, you run. They can't go on stone, but. In sand, you won't necessarily know when it's coming. Nice. I yeah, I know. The only reason we knew, the only reason we knew somewhat of what that was is we've been eaten by our version of those before. Great, good to I've hear. Been <laughs> um, yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend. Is your version that big as well? Uh, no, not no, quite no. that big, no. Uh, very poisonous, though, kind of thing mm, here. Uh, no, but from what I understand, they are they're acidic, but not poisonous. Yeah, you know, ours are poisonous. Fun. Um, no, but yeah. they're big. Mm. The largest one that was recorded, the carcass was... The carcass made someone rich, let's just put it that way. But do yours hang out in packs? No. No, they're strictly oh, solitary and territorial beasts, but they are that's right there is probably half the size of how big they grow. The largest one recorded was about sixty foot wide, sixty foot mouth wide and about seven hundred foot long. Uh, that that makes me want to ask my question to you again. Uh, do they have eggs? <laughs> they do, but not surface-wise. They typically only once every 700 years have a clutch. When the clutch patches, it will they'll grow and spread into their own territory very quickly. I'd say the last known count, there's... Someone within Ruala who can tell you. I'm not sure who he is. Some form of nature watcher person. 
Um, fleshling like you, but he otherwise observes the the worms. They are one dangerous, but he said that from the last he checked, there were seven marked ones. Adult ones, not small ones. And that kind of information would be good for him to know as well, <clears throat> that, that there's a young one in the territories. Potentially going to get eaten, but at the same time, it's probably faster than its elder competitors, so should be able to outrun them. Do ours normally cannibalize each other? Uh, in extreme circumstances, but not much, no. Hmm. They work in packs, they're more of a social animal. These ones sound more predator um, territorial and kind of solitary. Hmm. Terrifying. But that'll be worth quite a lot. Selling that to the right person will make quite a bit. Anyway. Anything else you want to ask about those things? Again, that's one of the reasons why if I say run, you run. Uh, yeah. I have to imagine that those things tunneling around underground would encounter the other creatures. That so. is true. The queen has bedded her nest, most likely, given their survival, in some heavy stone area. And those things can't go through stone. Hence why the city's built, cities are built on stone. And the roads are made of iron. They protect us, keep us safe from those mm. things, mostly. Is that what they eat, then? They eat the dust, the iron dust. Right. If they hit the stone, it will typically cause them to break or shatter. And once their hide is broken, if they're of an old enough age, it won't repair itself. Hmm. So, is there anything bigger than them? Or are they the Let's biggest hope thing? Not. There is one thing that is bigger than them, but it is otherwise a myth. Well, not a myth, more of a, a tale for those fortunate enough to be in his service. In his service. I hate to think what would be bigger is than that. That is that the. Hmm. Um, I would like anybody proficient in religion to roll me a religion check. Uh, I want to be. I want to roll. Just burn who has expertise. So burn has plus twelve. So that's a twenty-eight. Anybody else proficient in religion? Nope. <sighs> Nope, I've only no. got a plus four. Nope. Okay. Um, hey. Burn lets out. Um, I had, the, had it just here. Hold on. <coughs> uh, Vulgar, god of the ethereal forge. That is the only creature that otherwise stands bigger than these and strong enough to defeat them. Yay. Yeah, later we might be able to take on one. Yeah, like a baby one. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about full on a dog. Level 20, let's go fight one of these at level 20. <laughs> yeah, you can. Enjoy yeah. getting eaten. I think I'm good. One shot campaign. Here we go. Post campaign. <laughs> Extremely <laughs> short one shot campaign. If the party gets CPK'd, it's history. Party dies in the ether. <laughs> <laughs> and then the party got murdered horribly because they didn't know when to just walk away from a fight. Who knows? Hey. Okay, how about this? When Rook's at near the end of his lifespan, because obviously he's going <laughs> to die first, Probably. we'll just go what? into the ether and murder and try and murder one of these things. Okay? I've got. If he dies, no big loss. Actual life left. I I've got at least quite, actually, at least half a dozen. Centuries of natural life left. Um, Sasha's not far behind. Rook's got like 60 years. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Who I've knows got... when Craiglove's going to go? <laughs> Certainly so not Craiglove. Queen... <laughs> the Raven Queen, it seems. <laughs> the Raven Queen just goes, yeah, once you're dead, I can't use you anymore. There, be, be young again. <laughs> uh. I just want to die. Nope. As... As you're traveling, just the general things that are uh, happening, you're kind of having these conversations, talking about potentially fighting one of these things one day as you discuss with one another and talk, observing your surroundings yet again, you yep. begin to get closer and you see in the distance, Malcolm, given that you're flying up high, 
you see in the distance what looks to be the beginnings of a wall and several towers coming into view. Um, far off in the distance, probably another two hours of travel by a caravan. Um, but given it's probably closer to midday, you will arrive there soon. As you're traveling... I, I yell out to them. Hmm? I yell out to them, saying that we're about two hours away. Hmm. The rest of the party is made aware of what's happening. It's at this time that you also spot in the distance what looks to be a few kind of dark silver and black marks moving towards the road. Uh, off on your... From this direction, it's, it's hard to tell what's... Um, East, west, and so on, but it's off to your left. Um, I try and get the the the, the female that was that that saw the, the other thing's attention and try and, and point in the direction I see this thing. Okay. These things. She climbs up onto the top. She takes her spyglass and gets a look. Carvo. There's almost a pause as he kind of turns and looks up um, toward, uh, kind of looks up and over around the side. As she responds, Cousin Anesso. He kind of stops and just kind of thinks for a moment as he says a few things in Primordial to the rest of them. Before he turns to you and, and says, hide. Now. Pointing towards a tarp underneath one of, in the caravan you're all in. Okay. Okay. I'll try. Okay. Yeah. Malcolm, are you joining them? Uh. Yeah. Yes? Is that a definite yes, or is that a I might? I, I'm i debating on if I want to turn into a tiny spider and hang out underneath the caravan. Do if there's anything you want to do now, now is your chance to do it, people. Anybody have um, any objections to this? No. Okay. I barely know what you're going to try and do, so... I said turn into tiny spider, hang out underneath the caravan. I want to see what's going on. Just in case. I'm just saying, if you end up getting bludgeoned to death by some iron rhino dick, I'm not saving you. <laughs> I like the idea uh, of that, actually. You have been warned by the cleric, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fine okay. if you want to try it. Go for it. But yes, I'm... Any of the rest of you? I'll stop you. Oh, okay. I would like everyone to make stealth checks. Those of you with heavy armor do not roll with disadvantage. Um, do I? Why would you roll with disadvantage? No, no, no. I mean, why would I roll? Has the camera actually caught up with the group? Oh, wait, yeah. Why, why are we rolling? Well, I, I'm not trying to be stealthy for anything, I don't think. So you're not hiding under the top? Yep. It's, they yeah. told they tell us to hide. Like yes. the main yes. guy told us to hide. It wasn't just some yes. random. Okay, yeah, no, then. it was it was Roller who told you. So that was a three on your okay. part, Sasha. That's a two. Thank you very much. Okay. Classic Sasha. No oh, fuck. All right, I'm back. Welcome back. Okay, roll me a stealth check, please, Malcolm. Stealth check. Okay. Nope. Your party is doing wonderfully so far. What did you get, Rook? Seventeen. Seventeen, two, Elgin? Five. Quick lot. <laughs> eight. Okay! How, this how is it the good. biggest guy? It's <laughs> quietest. Okay. Wait, did I turn into spider or not? You did turn into spider, yes. Okay. You turn into spider and you proceed to hide. I have a higher stuff than me. As you, as each of you begins to kind of hide, wrapping the tarp over you, a few more things are said as he otherwise um, tells, uh, as he says a few things. Um, do you want Burn to cast Comprehend Languages? Sure. Why not? Okay. So, uh, I'm just going to expand another stuff for I him. I do have a higher stuff in me. Okay. Oh. 
the spider. Huh? Do you want him to relay the information, yes or no? Sure. I mean, good to uh, know information. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you are kind of pulling along, as you otherwise hiding as best you can, kind of shimming about um, somewhat the clanking of the ride as you're otherwise going along, you uh, you hear a voice as somebody kind of pulls the top up and looks under, as Roller looks under and says, don't touch, and points towards a box that's next to you lot, also underneath the top. Kind of nods at the rest of you and then goes back to his business. Why would he say that? I want to touch. Damn it. Okay. Is there any last thing you would like to do before this begins? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> okay. Uh, no. I want to touch the box, but no. Okay. As you keep going, you feel the cart slow as you hear footsteps. Malcolm, you're seeing as you're on the outside, you watch as a group of about 25 individuals riding these ostriches, like creatures, the same birds that um, the caravan you're with was riding. Um, as they otherwise pull up, one who, uh, all of them are voidborn. Um, the one who otherwise jumps off has several scars that run across the metal surface that are otherwise um, healed and kind of hardened back over. As he kind of gets off, you watch as um, Roller gets off and um, Burn begins slowly translating to you quietly as best he can as to not give away your position. As Roller speaks the following. It's good to see you, friend. What brings you this far out? Just the usual stuff in just the usual stuff in the cart. Is that so? It's good to see you, yes, but I've heard a few things. What are you carrying? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary. Just usual stuff. Supplies, courier work, you know how it is. Maybe. But I've heard from Nesso you're not working for her anymore. Mm, that is strictly true. I have found a new contractor. Asked me to carry a few things from Ruala. Or to Ruala. Hmm. And what exactly would that be? You hear the voice getting closer to all of you. As Malcolm, you watch as he kind of moves closer towards the caravan. You're all, in, or you're all in, and you're on. Ah, uh, just, you know, stuff. Look, we've worked together for so long, and I know that you've got to do these checks. And I know I'm not working for Nesso anymore. But with the war going on, I'm not making a profit. I'm not a scavenger like the rest of you. You're going to. I'm going to need to trust me on this. I'm simply doing some shipping jobs. The thing is, I heard that it was more you left on bad terms with Nesso, not went there of your own accord. Maybe. Let's just say we're within an, an hour of Ruala. Yes, we can't outrun you, and I have no intentions of running. But the shipment is very important to somebody. And are you going to tell me who that is, just to try and scare me? Or are you just going to tell me what's in the cart? Either way, I can go searching. It's not going to stop me. I wouldn't if I were you. This is a shipment for Vesh. If you want to double-cross him, be my guest, but... I'm not exactly going to hide it if you do. Trying to kill me won't work. If my shipment doesn't arrive, he'll know. Who, he knows whose men patrol the city. He'll find you. He'll find Nesso. Then what'll you do? It doesn't matter if you're working for Vesh. You can still tell me what's in the back of the cart. <sighs> Fine. You, Malcolm, you watch as he reaches into... Uh, his robes and otherwise pulls out a piece of paper 
handing it to um, this individual who kind of gives a look and a nod of this is posh stuff paper obviously isn't written on that much as he unfolds it and gets a look at it uh, Malcolm make me a perception check do you okay uh, do you speak elvish or sylvan or under common Malcolm uh no, common infernal tonic is weird. Uh, okay. You look across the paper and you can see writing and ru runes in some form of elvish. You can't fully understand it. Um, as I believe the primordial language is elvish. I think. In its script form, if anybody else would know. It's whatever you, you want it to be, Chris. It's on page 123. Don't play me like that. Primordial is dwarvish, actually. So, huh. um, still no. None of your languages overlap. You see some form of like dwarven runes written on the surface of the paper. As he kind of reads <laughs> over it, he folds it back up and throws it in Rola's general direction. <laughs> so you don't know what's in it, then? Not exactly. All I know is that Vesh wants it. And I wouldn't get involved if I were you. <laughs> you crossed Nesso. It is my duty to see what's here, and I will be breaking open that crate, if you don't mind. Excellent. You hear as he begins to move forward before um, Roller says in common, I wouldn't if I were you. The individual pauses and turns, kind of looking back with a very sceptical and strange look. Vesh has friends. What would you like to do? Oh, I so <laughs> want to cast banishment on this motherfucker. You currently can't see him. You're underneath the tarp. Uh... Hmm. Oh. This is your chance to do something if you want to. Right now he's moving towards the top, and unfortunately with your stealth check, he does know that something is under there. Okay. Uh, should we just go and try and intimidate him? I could Cause... hop out and become dragon. Yeah, okay, I might, okay. I might hit, take hit. a potion of growth and just square up. You do not want to mess with Bash. <laughs> It's up to you. Uh, um, okay, I want to put this forward. Technically, um, I can activate Spirit Guardians, and that does go through walls. Uh, uh, one thing. One thing, Chris. Mm -hmm. Since I can actually see him, mm -hmm. can I tell what he wants us to do? Hide or come out and do something. Make an insight check for me, please. Another thing about Spirit Guardians, you need to be able to see the people who you will otherwise blank out from this, which means you'll be able to hit everybody under the tarth, top. You won't be able to hit the Iron Rhinos, you won't be able to hit Malcolm, you won't be able to hit uh, any of the Caravaneers, which means they'll take damage from Spirit Guardians. Uh... So do keep that in mind if you do use it. Yes, it will work outside of it, but it will also hit all of the other creatures and Caravaneers in the area. <laughs> Uh, that would be 31. 31. Natural 20, that's with the plus 5, I take it? Mm-hmm. Okay. He seems to... doesn't mind whether you guys intervene or not. If you intervene, you have the upper hand with that. If you don't intervene, he seems to potentially be trying to gain control of this conversation. It's up to you whether you wish to join in. Now, Malcolm, you're the only one who knows this. The rest of you just heard Vesh has friends. Okay. I think I know what I'd like to do. Okay. I know what I'd like to do. I... But can I ask Infernal to cast Enlarge for Juice? Instead of popping the potion. If he doesn't want to, that's fine. I'll pop a potion. He but... can. Yeah. He has the spell points to use so, and he has the description written in, so that's fine. Cool. So you want him I'm to gonna... pop that? That would be his If thing, he then. can. Yep. Yep. And then I'm going to do some intimidating. Okay, so you're going to hop out as Enlarge Reduce goes through. You otherwise grow in size 
as you oh hello inferno well i've been talking i don't know Ah, can hear you no, now, yes. Just hear you now, yeah. yeah. Uh, I so, wanted to say I'm back. Okay, let me explain the situation. You're currently in casting in large reduce on Rook as you're jumping out from underneath a tarp on the back of a cart. The caravaneers helped you, you went on a little expedition. Um you saw a per you saw a worm shell of an iron worm. Um it was thirty foot wide more size and two hundred foot long ish, but it was buried in the sand. It was a shell of a young adult. Um he described these iron worms being about 700, the lo largest one being 700 foot long with a 60 foot um, span, uh, foot span, um, more size. Um, so yeah, you're helping him. You currently have comprehend languages up. I had to swap <laughs> out replica or forge replica for um, comprehend languages so you can understand them because you do not speak primordial. Who's talking, by the way? Uh, Roller, the captain, uh, or the okay. yeah, the captain of the caravan, as he said, Vesh has they're friends. Primordial. Yeah, they're speaking I primordial. Cannot... Yeah, he said, okay. or oh, Rook has just had a large cast on him from you. Uh, Sasha, you had something you wanted to do? Okay, yeah. So, um, there are other things back here with us, aren't there? How do you mean back here? Under the tarp. Yes, there's a giant box which he told you not to touch, and you guys. Right. Uh, okay, so what I'm thinking is, what if I cast animate objects on the box? Don't touch the box. I, yeah, do you I'm not touch touching the box. The box. But uh, We're not don't think animating the box. The box. <laughs> it's going to be good. Okay, if it's idea. explosive. Oh my Second god. Idea. Second idea. What if I just cast plane shift on this dude? No. Oh, he's Just not on his own, to though. A random page. He's, he's not on his own. There's 24 no. others. Yeah. I feel we may end up starting a war. Yeah. Okay. At this point, oh, you yeah. watch as Rook otherwise swings out from the edge of the cart, feet landing firm as he stands probably about, or nearly, how big would you be? Double your size, you're about 8 foot, foot, so probably about 15, yeah. 16 feet. As your, you and your massive form dwarf his 7 foot. He's tall for a Voidborn, but you dwarf him in comparison. As your hoofs kind of land firm on the iron and stone road, as you just look down at him. Make me an intimidation check, please. I'll say with advantage. Malcolm, what were you as, doing? Uh, I was going to say, as that happened, could I like jump off the the car as the spider and transform back into myself and like place my staff on his shoulder uh make me a acrobatics <laughs> check please as the tiny spider lets go of the cart the wind whoo, picks him up <laughs> i'm okay i am okay as you land back on your feet you land next to him placing your staff on his shoulder at which point you hear the all of you hear the drawing of weapons across the board around you um is there anything else the rest of you would like to do sasha elzian and Queglod, you haven't said anything uh can uh, i mystic step out the back of the car into a more preferable position than the back of a car such as i don't know um it's not here oh fuck it. to be next to rook so i sort of teleport next to rook okay in that kind of instant, right. you watch as Elzian disappears, and then almost with a snap of energy, appears next to Rook, like leaning against him slightly. Still small compared <laughs> I, to Rook. I would but... also like to step out. Um, I, I also, I'd like to step out, probably slightly less gracefully. Um, <laughs> roll me an acrobatics. Could I, I, could I just survey the area? Sure. Roll me an acrobatics check for the. Oh god, she fell out face down at Super Lava. Oh, that's embarrassing. It, this is over if it happens. Okay. <laughs> Sasha kind of crawl, swings out of the back. There's a moment where you watch as Sasha kind of lifts one leg over, the other leg doesn't seem to want to go. Before you watch as Sasha just rolls off of her belly onto her back and then does a three point landing at like from like two feet up and then stands up straight. Uh, Elton the tan head goes into a sound of scope. Hey, hey, that was just confusing enough to maybe get away with it. Um, yep. And, and surveying um, the area, yeah. make me a perception check, please. Quaglod, would you like to do anything? Um, yes, yeah, so it's definitely the difficulty of 
clambering off the car. But I'd like to merge with Philippe and fly off. Uh, Eleven. Okay. As this raven just, just appears out the back of the, the car. The placement of all these people. Okay. They are mostly in a leftward direction from where the cart was headed, um, in a large portion of them. A few of them have started moving around slowly to try and surround, as if to stop you from running. Um, the individual stands there. Did you roll your intimidation, Rook? Yeah, it's 18. 18. Okay. Do some save for him. Ha <laughs> ha! Two. Um, he stands there, and as your forms all appear, kind of, with the words of Vesh has friends... You all arrive. Um, Burn, would you like to show yourself as well? Um, I would. I just don't know what the fuck is happening. Okay. <laughs> you, you step out from the back of the car. You see you around you Voidborns just on uh, a large portion of the Voidborns all on there like ostrich-like birds um, as one of them's kind of just standing uh, these there. Are void -born. Oh, these are Voidborn as well, yes. Hmm? Okay, so... Oh no! These hey, these, they, these guys no, 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 no. these guys are defeated. Ignore these. Oh, okay. yeah, ignore the map. Yeah, you you destroyed that combat. Don't worry. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, when you are different people. These are different people. Yeah, you've made your way. Oh, and Hellrat, what's he gonna do? Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Can you, try to you, you watch. You watch as he otherwise, um, <laughs> as he jumps Hellrat. out of the cart with a spring in his step. As he otherwise la as he lands, slamming his hands into the ground, um, Elzian, you watch as a fireball is cast off in the distance, creating a silhouette explosion behind you all. Um, <laughs> as <laughs> Elzian, as he tries to make sure that the one proud tear running down it, forming its side, doesn't actually run down. So... That's beautiful. Oh but man, he's going up, a little rat boy. <laughs> Man. I don't know why Elgin feels like this is now his rat pet or rat child. Per parental Sasha is right now. Our rat child. Got it. Is he aggressive against us or what? Hmm? Uh, is that his being aggressive against us or what? Um, they seem to be, yes. Looking at them, they are not of people who are otherwise friends to your Caravanir friend. Who at this point begins it, it speaking. Sounds like they work for a rival. Our Caravanir friends are who? Uh, your caravan friends are Ro uh, the lo the leader is um, Roller, who, who you've otherwise spoken to, and otherwise the rest of his family here is not introduced because you have a language barrier. Yeah, um, they, they saved us. Yeah. From, well, they helped save us from the the, the murder thing. From the Cree <laughs> only, which are their creatures, yeah. and did, you've otherwise yeah, been traveling. Well, but did they say who they were, or like where they're from? Uh, they mm -hmm. are they're couriers they travel from city to city they're, us to the ah, they're traveling to the city that you want to go to called ruala which is ruala the city of steel oh, in okay, so that's the city i want to go yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. as as yeah. this mentioned we did all this for you the individual yeah, otherwise yeah. stands there scared in that moment as this happens um you hear the individual speak out which burn you're the only one who understands given you have comprehend languages up um you hear him you hear him kind of back off and go <laughs> <laughs> we still outnumber you. At least two to one. Um, <laughs> kind of as, as best as as best he can. Um, he, he thinks he outnumbers us guys. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's cute. That's that's genuinely cute. Um, oh, I just had a thought. I, I just had a thought as well. Ruler, okay. shut. Okay. What would you like to do? Okay. I, I would like... Can I use my illusory self feature to create a duplicate of myself? <laughs> and I would like... I know. Why? This <laughs> technically is not supposed to be used. It's supposed to be a way to make a disadvantage on an attack against me. I will but say for this purpose, given the fail and the wisdom saving through, you otherwise... In that moment, you say out loud in common... Um, he thinks he thinks he outnumbers us. He turns back to you. He understands common. As you say that, your duplicate self kind of appears next to you for that moment. Again, crossed arms, this time on the other side of Rook leaning against him. I would also like to cast Conjure Animals at 5th level. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, okay. we, are, we are just spending stuff. But just pure. What are you making? Uh, hold on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta see what the quarter CR real quick. How many? <laughs> uh, let's see. 
It makes eight, and it's doubled for five, so... So, for six, a bit lower. so 16. 16 uh, codiciars, that's like wolves. Uh... I mean, these things aren't made of metal, so probably go for anything bludgeony. Uh... Again, this is I'm just going to look at the list as well. This is beasts, right? Quarter CR yeah. or lower. Um, snakes, so... cows, um, draft horse, elks, giant badgers, uh, giant centipedes. Oh, they're, they're still small screechers. Giant frog? Mm, probably not. Giant, giant lizard. Wolf. Giant lizards are large. Giant lizards are large. Okay, I'm making all those giant lizards. <laughs> okay, I think with your vision and the distance of this spell, creating them to fill the entire area is a bit difficult, but you all watch as um, Malcolm just snaps his fingers and you watch as energy coalesces as 16 giant lizards surround the carts now facing towards these individuals. As the one before you kind of looks turns and in that moment he kind of goes fine then he says in common back at you be on your way <laughs> he just backs away going towards <laughs> his uh his bird that's what i thought correct sure. Sure. i feel like we should ask for some compensation here you watch <laughs> i'll slim a little bit yeah slow down or we can take them, but it would take too long and we can't be bothered. You watch well, as, Ro as Roller so looks over you, uh, as Burn, you hear him say um, back in Primordial, Thank you for being so understanding. I'll make sure Vesh doesn't hear of this. I'll wait for our payment back in town. Give, <laughs> and just gives a nod and cli yeah, climbs back on the caravan. I just have the lizard follow behind the caravan no, for an hour I have completely surround the caravan for an hour okay oh my god okay <laughs> the last the last okay that that was the, that was the one sasha oh i like that that great right, guys well well done as you as you move carrying on back towards town completely avoiding a fight there which may have been interesting <laughs> As you travel back towards the, or as you travel towards the town of, Ru or the city of Ruwala, the lizards fade, the hour goes by, nobody interrupts you, there's no other caravaneers on the road. You don't see anybody at all at this time. As you travel along, um, Marola kind of looks back and with the comprehension language languages still up, he says, thank you for the help. Um, <laughs> not sure that would have been very good to have that happen but glad you're all there and certainly capable no problem you hmm. saved it the first time hmm that's fair yes or even that is very fair but anyway welcome to Ruwala you'll be allowed in you are fleshlings there's nothing wrong with that in, in the city just make sure you don't cause any trouble <laughs> hmm. when have we ever that's done that? trouble any not laws we can be aware of the joking don't the joking. get on the wrong side of Nesso Vesh or a Vulcan Vulcan V O K E N Vesh he points to the large central spire Vesh is the lord of spire keep he is the one who runs the city Vulcan is a merchant and a very skilled mechanic. Nesso is the leader of the scavenger groups. She's the one who makes a large portion of the money in town, but keeps it to herself. She has the common people on her side, but Vesh has the strongest. Mm. As you may have heard, I work for Vesh now. Given there's a war going on in the material plane, the scavengers are able to go out and find more weapons. Less people need imports and courier jobs. As a result, I was blown out of a business from Nesso. So I'm working for Vesh, couriering various things. Makes sense. Wait. Why does a war in the material plane mean there are more weapons here? 
Every weapon that's created or repaired oh. appears here. Yes, of course. If there's a Don't war, that means there's more to find. They they don't spawn near the road, so there's no way for people to easily scavenge. You have to go across the sands to find weapons. That's where they materialize and grow. Is that what those other creatures were, were doing? What other creatures? Large, seemingly faceless things. When we first saw them, the ah, automatons. You but... met, okay, you met a katuk. Katuk, also known as eaters of dust. They, they work for darker forces most of the time. They're mercenaries. They don't ally themselves with any of the cities, but they collect weapons that are magical out of the bunch. They take them, they eat them, and they return them back to their owners. Or they keep them and use it for sustenance. Mm -hmm. They enjoy destroying magic. Huh. Scavengers and them clash a lot. They keep away from the roads. I don't deal, deal with them a lot, but... Cataks are hireable. You can hire them to look for things, but it's also possible, given if you ask them to look for something too good, they'll eat it and destroy it. Wonderful. Monsters. Sounds like a friendly bunch. Mm. They did seem to be interested in getting money. Yes. They can't bargain with it as much here. Your material coin isn't worth the same. We typically trade in iron here, rather than gold. But... You might be able to get something out of it. Hmm. But, anyway. I have one question about the weapons. Mm -hmm. Is there any upper limit as to what counts? Most of the time it requires some form of blade or edge or something that allows it to harm. Um... If it uses something else to harm, say for example, point gesturing to um, the feminine form's crossbow, if it's something like this, they typically don't arrive here. The ammunition does. Huh. So it's the thing that does the damage, not the thing that throws the thing that does the damage. Correct. So anything like a staff, anything like a lantern or a chair wouldn't because they don't have damage rolls specifically. Anything which has a damage characteristic naturally, like a sword or a dagger or anything like that, or an arrow, will spawn. So doesn't a staff have a... Staves technically are... Or arcane staves aren't technically quarter staves, so they wouldn't be lighthouse, oh, for example. Okay. Quarter staves okay. would, but things like so, a lighthouse or Queglod's iron star, or a dark iron staff wouldn't. So a war So a... As you say, a quarter staff would appear here, but a walking stick wouldn't. Correct. It also has to be made out of metal to spawn here. If it's a staff made entirely out of wood, if it's a quarter staff made entirely out of wood, it will not appear here. Yeah, I was kind of wondering about that because, like, Lighthouse does have the guitar form, so. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it is also entirely wood. Yeah, so I was not... gonna ask if it did. So it's it's not precisely the intent of it. No. Or... You could hit someone with, like, fists and chain and stuff like that, but it's not meant for it. The intention is anything that is made, not necessarily out of skill, but something with the intent of being made skillfully. In that huh. regard. Right, I see. So, for instance, a, a smith's hammer would... A smith's but hammer wouldn't, but a war hammer would. I see. I've got to find the duplication of my axe. Hmm. Hmm. He, he kind of looks over. He kind of looks over. Can't say I recognize it, but if it's magical, then you're probably going to want to speak to some of the collectors. They live all over. Vesh is the strongest one in town, but there are several who live here. Hmm. Is there Which any special way of searching for weapons, or do you just look at them? If you find a collector, if you find a particularly fanatical one, they might know where it is if they've got their eye on it from another collector. There's backstabbing, stealing, killing, and trading quite a lot. Um, Vesh is the best at all of those things here. But... Yes. Hmm. I thought we need to meet this Vesh character. 
Yes. If you're trying to work with Vesh, I won't be able to introduce you. If you're simply trying to get into his good graces... The only thing I can recommend is head to Titan's Clash. It's an arena in town, and his champion, live, his champion lives and thrives there. He currently lies unbeaten. You can beat him in combat, I'm sure that will get his attention, but... If you have a weapon that you might be willing to trade, he might also want to get your attention. Hmm. I've watched guy fight his champion. I enjoy uh, fighting. Is it a one v one? It would be a one versus one. Yes, he is. is... Magic, allowed. magic is allowed. His champion uses it. <laughs> Keep in mind, death is not a boundary in those arenas. For us Voidborn, if we die, we simply go back and get reforged by, um, by the Great Smith. And we join the repeated cycle. Granted, we don't remember it. But death to us is very different to death to you. Yeah, I've already died, like, twice. <laughs> okay, yeah, but don't do it again. I was so adamant that I shouldn't die again. I'm trying to follow your advice and just not die. As you approach the large iron gates with the Comprehend Languages fading, you... I recast it as much as it is fine. You recast it? Okay. Spend the necessary slots. As you enter in, you can see the large gate before you, which is otherwise left ajar. You can see the large iron walls and the f uh, uh, that wrap around the entirety of this city. The stone where it is otherwise, is otherwise laid on has a metallic sheen over the top of it in a brick-like fashion as the roads here are all metal but it is not hot it is just dry same as before the large city itself has three central spires which you can see that completely um, show off their majesty compared to the rest of the city one is much larger than the other two which otherwise stand at equal heights the largest one in the center has what looks to be three prongs at the top of it which all point upwards just below them is this large glass ball or bead that's embedded in the tower the width of the tower so probably anywhere between 60 to 80 feet wide itself this glass bead is near the top of the tower or the spire here you see that the other two on the other hand where they are instead of having three prongs they are flat topped with a single prong pointing up from the top of them where it abruptly cuts off and then goes to that single prong, almost like a lightning rod. Um, and above the tallest spire, you can see what looks to be a singular cog, about the same width as the spire itself, slowly turning with this bluish and golden energy flowing down from it in waves, down towards the three prongs. Going into the main city and through the walls, you see Voidborn manning the walls here, all of them. Voidborn, typical description as before, they are smooth and otherwise metallic on all of their surface, with the purple veins and lines otherwise covering and coating their body, either a male or mas uh, female or a um, masculine form about them. They wear no clothes, bar just their typical skin. Telling one from another is difficult. The most that changes is their typical physique, so muscle structure, their... Um, belly size, their hunched nature, and otherwise embellished or larger features. There are a few of them which have scars or marks, and the patterns between each Voidborn varies dramatically. They are each unique, as if they are their own fingerprints with the lines and the markings. But you note that each of the individuals lining the walls and the guards of this area are like centurions. They have a large flowing iron cape with the same purple veins but runes embedded in them that shine and glow, as well as a metallic helmet in the same design as a Galia. Um, for those who understand that, those who don't, it is a Roman helm. Um, uh... And you see a number of them have varying plumage across them, um, as they otherwise stand in armament form. Several of them hold what look to be three-pronged tridents or spears with what looks to be these large metallic shields to their side as they stand there and guard. A lot of them watch your entry. They don't see fleshlings often, as you otherwise travel in with the caravan. The individuals watch you enter, but they don't intercede. They don't stop you. 
a mistake for them. You look around the area. You can see that there are a number of streets, but you note that to your immediate right and left, it goes down into the ground itself and you can see that there are a few buildings on the surface but they are like small spires and structures there aren't any surface buildings as it were not many anyway hmm. uh, at which point Rolla looks back at you and kind of knowing the comprehend languages is up right i will be taking myself and the fam and the family elsewhere if you Need my help? Um, I assume you have some form of messaging, given your strength? Yep. Uh, could you point yeah. us in the direction of a collector, or are they just... If you're looking for a collector, I would recommend heading to the cent to the Storm Spire Keep. The tall spires in the centre. But wow. you're unlikely to get far without the attention of a collector, without selling one of your weapons to them first. And I imagine you'll want to keep those. Otherwise... Okay. It's not really much else I can help you. If you're looking to buy stuff, or to try and hire scavengers, I recommend heading below. I I would like... You said there was a, another quest thing here? There are a few, yes. They all live in the Rust Smith burrows below. Uh, including the one that uh, does the... Uh, does the thing of keeping track of the iron worms? I believe so. I've never met them personally. If they live anywhere, it would be down there. That's where most of the populace lives. Unless she's somehow acquired a place within the towers. I want to go there. I want to meet this person. Uh, dude. I want to meet this dude. I want to meet this flesh. <laughs> Well, thank well, you for taking well. us here. You're welcome. And maybe we'll meet again in the future. If you ever need my services, just look for Wex. Wex? Wex is our family name. I'm Roller Wex. Oh. Yes. Wex is our family name, and if you ask for my, my name and where I may be, I'm sure there are plenty of people who might know where I am. Nesso probably would, but I wouldn't recommend tangling with her. If you do get in good graces with Vesh, maybe give a recommendation and maybe ask where I might be. But for now, I've got to take this to Vesh. You can tag along if you want, but you won't be able to speak to him. Mm. Should we head to the middle and see? Can do. When, when just... To make clear, when do we need to leave her? Some days to divinate. Oh, uh, what's the time period now? It's like uh, it's either today or or tomorrow morning is when we have to go because that's when the meteor will be dropping. It's midday at the moment, and the meteor. It was four days when you were going to get to the. Um, when you were going to get the amber, you then spent a rest in hell. You've taken a rest here, so if you took one more long rest in the ether, it would then be arriving midday the day after. We probably the, want to the day after tomorrow. So the thing yeah. is, we, leave. we're probably gonna want to leave as soon as possible because we still have to get back to the salamander. The yeah, we've got to get the salamander. Uh, the dog. Like themselves, we don't want to just leave yeah. them there. I yeah. mean, I mean I you, have you've been here, to earn, and you have the tuning fork. You can just come back if you just take something from here, can't you? Because you can plane shift and then teleport if you've got, like, a, a, a bubble. Uh, now that you've been here, you can plane shift to the edge of um, Rual or the City of Steel. Or into okay. it, depending on how well you roll. But I, I think we should have a look around her, see what, see what there is. I'm just trying to make I mean, sure that... Do, definitely do take some take some souvenirs as like a yeah. gift. Well, yeah. I would like to go to this person if I'm allowed. I would like to see... <laughs> Mostly I want to pass on myself, because I have a feeling where... You, you want to pass on your spell book to someone? You can no, pass a spell. 
Oh, a spell. Okay. Yes, I so have a spell. spell. I got one. I have a spell to communicate with other druids. Oh, I see. Okay. Provide needs a druid. It, I have a feeling they're a druid. It, uh, from the it description, it sounds like this world's version of a druid. Mm. He said a nature person. And they're it's a, worth trying. And they're a freshman. Keep in mind that most druids don't like me metal. The only ones who do are the, from the barren lands, because they've learned to True. live that way. And from like, Goladon as well. So much so they can't even take metal armor, right? Oh. Correct. That's a base thing. Druids can't, but barren lands mm. is different. But they can use metal weapons, but isn't. Mm. But reasons. Mm. Anyway. This could be, so I would like to go see. Do you want to go now or? Uh. Mm. Mm. I'd like to see if this place has a has any tuning forks. Mm. What? Oh. Uh. Hmm. Uh, nothing. Well, to be quite fair, we don't want to. It would be good if you have an extra one just to have spare in case something happens to burn. When... Well, my thought is having one that goes to the material plane would probably be a lot easier to find outside of the material plane. It's not a bad shout. That would remove basically all risk from the journey. Mm. We know how to survive here now, so, mm. you know, if we need to come back and, and defend ourselves, we, we, we can. Rook, you wanted to look into finding the counter pure. I do, but I'm in no rush. I understand we need to get back at some point. And Indeed. However, seems... it, it might not be a bad idea to ask around mm. collectors. It, it shouldn't take too long to get in touch with one of them. No. The only issue we might have is the language there. Yes. Right now, like, the only people who understand common that you know of are Roller and the guy you just sp and the guy you just intimidated. And he seemed to speak common better than Roller did. Mm. So as it currently stands, common doesn't seem like a very good language here. I mean, we've got people that know Dwarven, so I can presume they can write stuff down. True. It could be slower, but it would be possible. Yeah, it'll, it'll be another method of communicating. Um, we can understand that, but we can't communicate back. I, I, I mean, would like to look around for, like, shopping. Nice. Yeah. This is the city I saw, by the way, Chris, right? This is the city you saw, yeah. After you described it to him, he said that this is the one you wanted to go to. Mm. Also, um, shopping may not be too easy here, as we don't have they a lot don't... of iron on us. Yeah, they don't they trade do. in gold. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to convince them, but everything will probably be at a much more... Do we have any spare weapons? Or... But... Any old weapon? This umbrella sword a bit tighter. <laughs> oh. uh, let's see, do I have anything? So, were you following Roller as he's heading to drop off his package, or are you traveling separately? I, th well, I think he said that I'm... we can't talk, so it'd be pointless following be... him. Yeah, I think we go to a collector and see. He's Cause... heading in the general direction of the collectors. The collectors all live oh, in the spires. Okay. He's yes. just deliver yeah. delivering to one particular one, but getting a collector's attention will typically involve you selling something to them, is what he said. Do we have anything decent to sell? I've got a light cross. No, I don't. The only thing I have <laughs> is a short bow. Which is uh, made of wood. Yeah. Which is made of wood, yes. So it's worth nothing here. Exactly. I've got none of my knives. Excuse me while I'm doing a bit of tidy up. Um, Anything in the bag of holding? <laughs> that, that's, have... what I, that's where I'm looking. I've got I've only a short bow. Sure. We I mean, never got any weapons, did we? 
Nope. Uh, I mean, I typically, by rule of thumb, don't have any weapons on me, because, you know... We, um, well, we know what we're dealing with here in this town, how they trade a bit mm. better. And you know that learning primordial might be a good skill coming back here. Mm. Or having yeah. more ways to be able to talk to them. Um, sure. Uh, what are we trading paper? Huh? <clears throat> what did you say? Paper. Uh, because when I was looking at them, it looked like uh, when uh, is the other guy still with us? The... He's gone. You guys said you weren't going to follow him, so he's already left. Uh, the, 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 guy, the guy we were traveling with handed the guy we intimidated a piece of paper, and the guy looked at it like it was good stuff. Like, they don't use it very often. Was that thing written on the paper? Yes, but I couldn't understand it. It was in Dwarven. That's oh. quite probably what was on the paper rather than the paper itself. Although, there aren't, there aren't any trees that you've seen, are there? There are no, no trees you've seen. Don't think so. So, so maybe so, paper is a rare commodity here. That's, a f that's not a bad shout. We could set up our own paper stand. Sorry. Oof. Weird thoughts that it's better if they're out rather than in. I mean, how much paper do we have? I'm really getting into this whole paper thing. I, I have paper. That. I don't know how much. Is that supposed to be 20 sheets of paper? Yes. I don't know. Here Any paper I had is gone. Not disintegrated. I have paper. I have ink. I have a spell book. Yeah. Given the stuff that you've actually written down and you don't actually have a notebook, I'd say you probably used up half of that already on the various notes because you were those are things like, oh, I have a note down where this is or anything like that. So Okay. Ten pieces of paper. Still something. This just seems like a lot of effort for when we could leave and come back better equipped to dip to up do stuff in this place. True. There's not really much we can do here. Sure. I, I thought it's a bit of a buzzkill answer to all this, but... Elzion and Malcolm, the two of you as you're kind of like standing around talking, you notice that a little bit of a crowd has been drawn as this just bundle of fleshlings is just talking in the middle of the street. Does it look like any of them can understand us? Making me an insight check with disadvantage to the sheer number of them, and the fact that they don't have facial expressions. I... I... Hmm. They're yeah, smooth. They're no, smooth. No, 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 that's common. Uh, that's... Uh, what's that? That face it. El Elshin lacks... Oh, no, he doesn't. He lacks the well. 14. 14. Look around. Yay! Can't really tell. No facial expressions, no reactions. Does anyone here... Uh, Elshin is going to turn and goes, Anyone here no common? Then I'm going to ask the same, but for Elvish and Elvish, and... Sylvan and Undercommon and... I'm going to avoid deep speech. I have a feeling that that may get a bit weird for everybody. <laughs> as, you're, <laughs> as you're standing there kind of shouting out these languages, just asking, um, you watch as one of the centurions from the gate just walks up and just kind of goes closer to you. See, he has a kind of a thick um, flat plumage over the top of his head from ear to ear. Um, mm. as, he as he wanders over, he kind of stops next to you, listens for a moment before he. Re what languages were you going with? Oh, I was going for anything Elven. So that's Elvish, Sylvan, Undercommon, and and Common, not Deep Speech. Okay. And I was trying Inferno. And I will try Giant and Goblin because you know, why not? Oh God, Goblin. Okay. Anybody else? Does anybody else want to try this tactic? No? Oh, no, I'm okay. just good waiting around. Okay. As, you, as he stands there kind of listening, there is a moment where he recognizes one of the languages. As he responds in Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> as he responds in Goblin. You're... Hey, how you doing? Would you like to buy? <laughs> hey there, 10 gold for a heal. 
It's Noblin in Harbour. So, you're lost, huh? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Wait, he understands you? Yeah, he, apparently he speaks Goblin. <laughs> Who would have thought? Goblin? <laughs> Goblin's one of our more regular languages around here. Oh, most of you, most, most fleshlings are goblin, so we speak goblin. No, no, no. I no. am relaying all of this to the group. Most fleshlings in the city are goblin. Not Bad you, me. lad. Oh. I see, he wants to go on a goblin perch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm, just going to light, I'm just going to grab Elgin's hand. Just go, no, dear. Later. But they're so filthy. All of them. So's your mother. Okay. I am her first. So, what is it we want to ask? Just how curiously, like, we've, we've got the attention of someone now? Like. A guard I... as well, so. Most information we want, we can get from him. Well, the problem is, I think the. The. Second part of uh, the the quill and the second lore react to mine, but mine don't react to them. So whoever has them has them reacting to mine, which are here. Mm. I can't find them. So if they don't find me, I can't really well track them down. Okay. So that's wh why I want to talk we to some collector. So we want a collector, then. Collector, yeah. someone that might know okay, a weapon. So... You know, as, as I'm gonna say this, as has been made clear to us, if we want collector, we go to that spire that the guy we were with was going yeah, to. Yeah, middle spire. Yeah. And we need to give we need to give up a weapon, at least a weapon. Usually, yeah, they, we need to sell them a weapon. Maybe the fact that we're, as they say, fleshlings, maybe their curiosity enough to actually. Be willing to talk with us and hear us out, but I wouldn't bank on that. No. And we don't, don't really have any weapons that. to spare. Nope. Also, weird question, Chris. I do shields appear here. Yes. Yes, they do. Oh, hey, Sasha. <laughs> if my to sell some of your shields. Wait, I've just realised. Wait, Sasha. All the shields that you haven't sold. Bring them here. No one will. No one will get them. But it's a different place to not sell. Them. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. it's awesome. You're really so making me regret bringing you back to life. So what are you? Oh, what are I... you saying to this guy? Yes. Didn't you have a warhammer? Your old one. Am I still carrying that? Guys, can we please focus on what we're telling? Yeah, telling the yeah I, I can't. Yeah. This guy is standing here. I don't know what to say. Help. Wait. I, mean, I, mean, I just want to know where the hell this person is because I want to go find this person now. Like, we're not really doing much now. We have no yeah. way of doing much. I think. What if Malcolm describes. No. Describes what? Describes the guy that you're looking for. That could just I don't, have the guard I don't know what they look like. I don't, I don't know. That's okay. why I stopped myself. Um, I'll talk to the guard. There's a guy that keeps track of the iron worms, or has a log of iron worms. Could you point us in his direction if you have any idea who he is? It's a fleshling. Her. Her. She's a fleshling. <laughs> uh, I uh, no, I, I had no idea. She's not in town most of the time. Um... Can't can't say I know where she lives. Do you, you know have what? a name? I got a for her? Uh, I don't know. All I know is she works for Nesso. Works for Nesso. Oh, right. no. oh great. <laughs> oh, if we turn up to Ness if we if we go to Nesso, you know what's gonna happen. That guy's gonna be there and he's gonna be like, What the fuck? Those guys. Actually, I got a better idea. Can I go off into like away from the group, like, where not many people are, real quick, because there's a lot of people around and they seem to watch and follow you. The guards do not like you wandering off in the middle of this conversation as they watch you keenly. Well, I'm just, I, I, I'm just gonna ritual cast something. 
Okay. You it's attempt all... to cast commune with nature. Roll me a Christmas saving throw, please. Christmas saving throw. Ooh. Does this place hate me using magic? I, I guess there's not much nature around. Hmm. Uh, charisma saving throw, you said? Mm hmm. Uh, that's a 19. Okay. As you sit down and begin to cast uh, with nature, the guards kind of move over. As you begin to immediately cast, you watch as one of them goes to reach out for you, grabs your hand, disrupts your casting, and pulls you away. As this happens, you watch as the city's floor melts. And becomes this massive ball of metal which rises up and would have snapped around you. What is this place? As you as you're pulled away, the guard kind of throws you to one side, and the city floor kind of settles back down to a hardened floor. The rest of you watch this happen. What is this place? Tell oh, what you. That? you didn't tell me anything. You say that said, in goblin. That doesn't look suspicious yeah. in a very sarcastic manner. Okay. He immediately, like, stops talking to you, goes and says a few things to the others, which Burn, you understand, as, um, uh, as he shouts out, Make sure that one doesn't do that again! He'll get himself killed. I don't like this place. I want... Let's le we, we could just leave. As Burn, you hear him say that, at which point he turns back to you, Rook. Next time, make sure your friend isn't casting any unsanctioned magic in town. Fair. I will make sure of that. What was that? That's the city's defense. Huh. Anyone who casts uh, magic within town, well, this will not happen to. Anyone who tries to cast natural magic, which is more divination based, it will attack them. Right. Okay, that's. From what I understand, good things like detect magic, true sight, spells of that nature, it will attack them. Any spells which work on a natural basis? Anything which works on a natural basis, as well, you're also going to be hard-pressed here. The steel doesn't like it. Oh, bugger, I'm pretty sure that's half of my spells. Okay, that's good to know. Well, what we about will... um, me messages sending and that? Is it, a divination, is it a divination spell? I genuinely have no clue. If a, if a spell has the word commune in it, or if it is a divination spell, the city will attack you. I mean, that feels shady as hell, but okay. Use divination. Yeah. Get your double it. I mean, message is transmutation, so... I oh, no, sending's the... evocation, so it's fine. So sending will be fine, then. Detect magic, if you can t if you cast it, Quagalod, the city will attack you. Do you think that... True sight, scrying, arcane eye... It will all attack you. Now, okay. we could also ask this guy if we can find a tuning fork to the material plane. Um, Somewhere in town. Okay, Chris. I will not be casting Comprehend Languages. <laughs> After <laughs> entering the city. Day. Yep. <laughs> oh, I can't cast the truth. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, right, uh, Quaglot, I don't maybe you do points of damage to you for that. <laughs> Uh, man. Burn, could you thank this man for helping us, and ask uh, where a where we where we might find a tuning fork for the uh, uh, material plane? Good luck with that, Burn. Could you tell us where we're going to find the tuning fork? Oh, well, 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 you're the one that can talk. He can just understand things because of he... or something. He That's looks at you, and there's like a blink as he goes. Um. No. Do you mean the musical instrument? Is there somewhere that sells or has magical items that we could talk to? Anything magical, you'll want to speak to the collectors, but you're not going to get a word out of them, not without selling. Mm. Right. Okay. Do they only it's... sell or, or do they only buy or do they sell stuff? Okay. Relaying that information, he says, they trade. An equal for an equal most of the time, unless it's a special circumstance. Most of the time they won't trade money. Most of the time they'll trade other weapons of value. So I don't think that's what we want. We need to trade a thing. Okay, now, Rook. Mm -hmm. I've got an idea. Right. And I don't want to do this. <laughs> Bloody hell. When Elzian has an idea, 
It, okay. It's not, we're, no, we're not blowing anything up. <laughs> I, holding on to the umbrella sword, I, 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 I think a sacrifice might need to be made. Uh, Is it magical? I, it's no. not. They won't like. They won't like it. Never just, mind. No, I'm, 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 I'm just power. mentioning that because the price changes depending on if it's magical. Yeah. Or I mean, hmm. Well, it's something we can investigate, and I'll make you a new one. I, you know, I could, be, I could make myself a new one if I to get back to smithing. Mm, if true. the talk is of getting rid of non-magical weapons, I do have a dagger. It's not likely to be very valuable. We could use it to sweeten the deal, I suppose. But it, it, it yes, it, it would get us, get us a foot in the door. I do also have okay. a dark okay, steel one. It's not magical, but it's of higher quality. But I'd prefer not to part with it if possible. Okay. Um, here's what I'm gonna say to y'all. It's you know it's a bit uh, simple. What if we? We have a lot of enchanters here. What if we just made a weapon? Sasha. Bastards. Why don't you come here with some logic? <laughs> How fucking <laughs> dare uh, We would have to leave and come back, though. Yes. Can you we not enchant items here? Enchant on Do the you... go. Uh... What, just on the ground? Yeah, fuck it, why not? Sit Enchanted. down, draw an enchantment circle. Well, don't worry, it's not going to rain and rub away, so... <laughs> I've got my magic chalk, I'm happy to do this. It's where we find out enchanting causes the city to attack. Right, 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 not, not, even, not even like the people in the city, the city itself starts attacking us. <laughs> Built I would to make the oh, argument. You I, joke. I would make the argument. <laughs> I, I, I would make an argument that it's definitely not divination magic. At worst, it would probably be enchantment. <laughs> no enchantment actually isn't enchantment. I know, it's funny Wait. though. It depends on the effect you're trying to put in it, but yes. Chris, yeah? I got a question for you, because I don't know the answer to it. Okay. Um, With my chalk of teleportation. It's, non, it it's not cross-planar. It's no. no. It, it, it's it's okay. a it's a common item. It's not cross planar. Guys, maybe I... somebody did think of it. I think <laughs> so. Look, so they got it at level go two. I didn't peak. intend for you to use this to go from one plane to the other. <laughs> That's an oversight on your part. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. It's a common item. Leave me alone. <laughs> so Love we need to go to Stormspire Keep. Or we could just start see off. If we can... Yeah. Yeah. Sasha, is your Warhammer magical? The one you used to use before your No! Dragon. That fucker, pointing at Brooke, sucked the magic out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. It's pity the back out, Rook. The, the, guard uh... look, the guard looks at you all and says back in Goblin, so do you need my help still, or are you so, good? Uh, okay. If you're, yeah. if, you're, if you're still lost, not many people understand common. Not many people understand any of the other languages you may have been saying. Most people here speak primordial, and some speak goblin, but not many. Right. Otherwise, you're I... probably best heading down to the boroughs. See if you can find someone who might speak your language, I guess. Um, maybe try and seek out uh, Vulcan. 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 V O K E N. Vulcan ha Vulcan Ham. Vulcan. Do you guys have an issue with me just going to the burrows when you guys send me there? I don't plan on going anywhere else. I just okay. Just go there. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Just please stop trying to cast magic. Yes. I didn't cast the know. Magic to suggest look, enchantment. Look, we asked if there was any rules we should follow. He said nothing about that kind of magic. He said right? don't cause trouble. He said don't that cause trouble. That doesn't count. Yeah, that does. doesn't count. <sighs> How am I supposed to know that the city's going to attack for using divination magic? 
That's fair. So where would I find Vokenham? Uh, you'll find you'll find him down in the burrows. He's below. Um, he's pretty secluded. Um, he's a goblin, so he'll speak goblin. Um, but um, yeah, that guy told us about. Uh, Vokan is one of the guys he told you about. He's one of the three rulers of the city. Uh, yeah. He is a void-born goblin. Just to be specific. And what does he do? He was the... He's the mechanic. He works on machines. Right. But okay. if, you're, if you're looking for anybody like that, it might be worth speaking to him. He's got a little bit of an ins with some of the talkers of Drown Town. Translators are hard to find, though. So... It might just be better off learning Primordial and coming back. You'll be able to speak to everybody that way. Um, if you're looking for a way home, Vulcan's also the one who was in charge of the travels. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Should we head to the Spire just in case? And then... Yeah, let's go to Spire. See if we can waggle a couple okay. of weapons around and see if they react. So Malcolm's wandering off down to the burrows. Everyone else is going to the Spire. So... Let's go. Yeah. As you're progressed uh, to this... I, I gotta head off now, guys, so try not to die. We won't. Uh, and yeah. uh, Chris, if it becomes necessary, I've got a 7th level spell slot. Uh, You'll cast Firestorm on, on the guards. Dwarf. I got it. Firestorm or, or Guardian Dwarf. Your, your choice. Sure. Okay. Yeah. We'll, be done. we'll be done in a minute anyway. Yeah. As you make your way down the street, you see the large storm spires as you begin to get close to them. You see, um, as you've kind of spent a little bit of time talking, you see Rowler kind of at the base of one of the towers, and you see a few kind of voidborn forms otherwise talking to him as you see they lift off the massive crate and begin to carry it uh, inside as you make your way towards the base of the tower. You see the uh, that there is a set of la there is a large open doorway. Uh, that leads in and you can see that it's not very busy there are a number of individuals who are otherwise the same kind of guards standing post as you approach the tower itself um your comprehend languages how long does it last an hour uh, i think it's an hour i'll check it out comprehend languages lasts one hour so you've i'd say you probably have about 50 minutes of it left You reach the base of the tower. You can see the doorway before you, and you see um, Roller nearby. Um, does he seem busy, or he, he's just finishing off? Up, uh, uh, he's just finishing the payment. You watch as the as one of the individuals kind of comes over, um, takes what looks to be a sack, and places it in his hand. As he kind of opens it up, he gives it a quick look, closes it, and ties the um, ties the top of it, which seems to be kind of this wiry thread. As he otherwise ties it and just places it into the sack, or in, into the sack, into the back of the cart, and um, just kind of gives a whirl of his hand as they begin to lead on. Okay, well, there he goes. They begin travelling past you. He kind of gives a nod of his head as to the rest of them, as you travel past, heading towards the base of the tower. Enter. You see the large doors before you, which are currently manned and guarded as they close. Ah. Okay. Um, hmm. Right. Wanna try? Yeah, sure. Um, I will say goblin. Do you speak goblin? <laughs> there is Why a, not? There is a pause as the guards both look at one another. Let's see if either of them do. One of them kind of turns and goes, Yes, why? Huh, you do. Excellent. Okay, we are looking to potentially trade or barter with items with uh, traders, collectors. Anyone in particular you're looking for, or just any of them? Uh, look at the guys. Anyone in particular, or should we just anyone to start with? 
Tell them I'm looking for a quill. I don't know if they're going to know, but okay. We're potentially looking for a quill. Any that could be located with that. They both look blankly. Not that I... None of them own quills, as far as I'm aware. Or at the very least, they're not for sale. Quills aren't really weapons, though. True. Okay, I'm just looking for any collector we can negotiate with. Any? Yeah, that'd be a good start. If you're looking magical gear or not? Probably magical. Hmm. You don't have any names you're wanting to talk to? No. We're kind of new around here. Let them come to you, then. I'm sure one or two of their scouts will see you and otherwise try and contact you. If they're after okay. anything. But you don't typically offer stuff. They look for things you've got. Alright. Right. I will be keeping the lore on full display. <laughs> full plumage. Full display? Full display. I'll be having it fly behind me. Okay. Should, should I just keep my axe on full display? Or just like, waggle it round when it... You have your chance. axe on full display anyway. It's not really hidden. No, it's normally on my back. Yeah, true, actually, yeah. My axe is sexy. It's on fire now. Just extra <laughs> emphasize. Okay. <laughs> is, uh, is that okay. all? Uh, anything right, else, please. guys? If it's non-magical stuff you're trying to sell, then head down to the boroughs and speak to Nesso, or one of her lackeys. Okay, that's good to know. Secondly, I heard there's an arena here. Whereabouts would I find that? Titan's Clash points off to the, um, in a eastward direction. That's an arena name, if ever I've heard it. Okay, thank you. Looking to fight, or are you looking to watch? Bit of both. Maybe watch. Maybe square up to some people. Depends hmm. what tickles my fancy. Good luck. So. Let's quickly sort this Fuck out. Fuck it. Electrocute the guy. Oh, God. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Fuck this, this it. Electrocute, electrocute the guy. What? <laughs> it's it's always, electrocute it's always, it's always I, something I, good I, when I to click on a grease. Simon was uh, putting some logic to this, and he kept went. <laughs> Go, you know what, do this dumb idea. We're talking about electrocuting the guards with the spear just to show the you know, the magical weapon off, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I still have the spear, Chris. Uh, I, I, spear. I want the stone, but Sam and Elgin think it's a dumb fucking idea. <laughs> and then Quake oh, Lord's like, hopefully, it should see it's a bad idea, but fuck it, let's do it. It's like, <laughs> all right, the so, reason. so as you make your way through the streets heading towards the arena. You see the large walls surrounding it, the small spikes and spires around the outside. You see it is grand in the way that it is designed. Several archways and small window holes. You see a lot of guards wrapping around the outside. And you can hear cheers and jeers from the inside as people are shouting and um, just yelling in praise and selection to this. In a language which you don't seem to understand. Burn, it's still a complete babble to you, but still. It's a language. As they otherwise shout and jeer, you can hear what's going on if you wish to enter. I kind of do. I'll, I'll to start with, I want to view and look at what's going on and get a rough idea, but yeah. I, By I enter, I mean enter in to have a look. Yeah, that's the plan. Okay. Do any of you wish to not go in? Elson will go in. Not to fight, but to mm -hmm. watch. Yeah, I'll go in. Heading inside, you travel in past the um, past the guards. They don't stop you. It's free entry, it seems. As you head inside, you otherwise look into the arena itself. You see what looks to be a individual, um, voidborn individual, kind of the same kind of style as the others, a large shield and a trident-like spear as they hold it in one hand in a very steady stance. This one has a plumage similar to the one of the guard, but this one is from the forehead back across to the back of their neck. Um, the individual holds themselves in kind of a position, a ready-to-fight position as they are preparing for any a number of attacks to come towards them. You see, as they say, uh, as this is going on, 
burn you hear being um shouted out um in not your common tongue but as you hit have comprehend languages and now the the challenger faces the champion in the final bout let us see if a, if another one will fall <laughs> at Vesh's champion. Lava! Uh, as this happens, oh, you watch... Oh, as the interesting. As the gate rises from one side, you watch as a voidborn form leaves. Not terribly scrawny. A muscular form. Thick, glowing purple runes and veins cover their form as he wanders out. And stands there. You look at the two, and you can't quite tell which one seems to be Vesh's champion. You watch as he otherwise lifts his fists up before any sound is made as the um, crowd silences, and you watch as he binds his fingers together in with his knuckles wrapped around each other. As he pulls away, you watch <laughs> lightning begins to wrap around his wrists and fists. As he pulls them apart, these massive whips of electricity pull to either side of him. As he raises his fists once more with these coiling chains of electricity reaching down from them, the crowd cheers as they begin to shout out, Lava! Lava! in the primordial tongue. Well, I think that's the champion. Okay. You you watch as the individual with the shield and, and trident rushes forward at the, the sound of um, the match starting. As he uh, swings the whip, you watch as it extends a good 50 feet. As it swings forward and down, the individual dodges out the way, taking a spin. And as each of the bits of the whip hit the ground, lightning coils down from above, striking in the nearby vicinity before he spins around with the whip taking another strike as it spins through the air he jumps over it again another spin getting closer within range as he prepares to go for a um, spear strike but you watch as lavar the whip in his left hand coils up around his fist forming this massive mallet as he swings it clanging against the shield it is a earth-shattering sound as the challenger is flung a good 70 feet backwards into the iron wall where he collides with it with a massive ringing sound. You see as he falls to the ground, his back where the metal is has bent inwards from the impact as Lavar kind of lifts his fist upwards with the whip still in his right hand as the fist turns back into another whip as he stands there kind of preparing for the next assault. As the individual begins to get cautious, you watch as Lavar brings his hands together and pulling away, you watch as these sparks of fire begin to form as he hurls a fireball at the other individual. It rockets forward, striking against the person, the fire flickering across their form. They take the hit and it's a good hit before they rush out of the flames trying to get within range. You watch as in that moment he reaches forward with one hand and grabs the individual by the shoulder. You watch as they freeze in place, as a few of you would recognize a hold person spell. As he does, you watch as the whip in the right hand turns into a spike. As he jams it into the individual's stomach, the lightning goes through. The individual is shocked there in that moment, paralyzed. As with that critical hit, they are shot backwards a good five feet, frying and quivering with electricity, their body shaking. You watch as the trident falls to the ground, the shield shaking in the other indiv in the individual's hand, as they are lying there, quivering and very much unconscious. He reaches up with the la with the large spike as the crowd cheers. He takes a bow, turns and leaves. Wow, that guy looks like a real pain in the ass to have to fight. Hmm. Yeah, it sure does. You see this, you look out I'm across. Hmm? I'm not talking to Rick. Ah. As you see out, the call is made as the individual shouts out. Thank you for watching, everyone, as Lavar takes another one. Let it be known we have no more challengers for the next week. If anyone wishes to take up the call, they can. 
If not, we will see you for the final bout next week when Nesso's champion tries to claim Vesh's throne. I am Umir, caller of bouts. Take care. And with that, you kind of look over. You see the caller as he takes a bow, kind of does a salute before disappearing. And that is where we will end tonight's session. So, sorry about the interruption there at the end, but thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. And we will return next week for more wonderful things with Vesh, Lavar, and the Material Plane, potentially. So, please. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.